All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome again to the Terrapin Trials, the last Terrapin Trials recap we have. Um, you know, in, in these in these times of a pandemic, there's nothing we want to do more than talk about an uplifting, hopeful episode of Survivor where the good guys win and everyone runs off hand in hand, all merry. So um, can't wait to break it down. Um, but I have a great panel um, to, to do it with today. We are loaded um, and we're not even f at full capacity yet. So really excited to talk through it. Obviously, as you know, we have the great uh, Jarvis, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not as likable as my companions here, but I am memorable, just like Jarvis. <laughs> <laughs> um, the I put this in chat, but I don't know if you saw it, Lita, so I'll ask you too. Which was the bigger sin for me? Not telling Faluke she couldn't steal an idol or not telling Terry that it's pronounced Jervis. The Faluke one because Jarvis is hilarious and makes Terry look dumb. Yeah. He's um, such a huge Survivor fan, Austin. <laughs> he sits down every Wednesday and watches it. Uh, look, casuals don't know that they're casual. That's the thing. That's true. Yeah. Um, well, anyway, thank you for joining Lida. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, then we have uh, returning from uh, their, I don't know, you came on episode four and five, I think. So returning from that, we have the two stars of the Bitter Jurors podcast. It is Sam and Derek. Um, Derek first, how are you doing? Um, that was a lot. I'm <laughs> mad at you, Austin, for making me, one, watch a season of Survivor where a man won, and two, making me feel like I didn't feel bad about it. Like, that's just... Ooh. Two horrible things to do to me. <laughs> you didn't feel bad about a man no, winning? No, isn't oh that Oh my horrible? god. Yeah, no. and I also can't relate. <laughs> Sorry, in this case. <laughs> this is going to be a fun conversation. Uh, Sam, how are you doing? Hey, we all saw the heart emojis Derek was putting in the chat from, you know, the first premiere recap that you guys did here about Terry. So, you know, I didn't know where it's no, it's no surprise here that he loves his boy, Terry. Uh, <laughs> I'm doing good. It's been a good day. It's very rainy here in Pittsburgh, uh, but that didn't stop us from going to do a grocery curbside pickup. So as opposed to yesterday when we had no food, we finally have food here again. It's been uh, it's good. Is that uh, is going to the grocery store your version of the sundial challenge in the rain? Yeah, it was really tough. Uh, me, my sister, and her boyfriend were in the car together. Eventually, I started coughing about 20 seconds after I said that I would never leave the car, and I decided to leave the car. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, uh, glad you made it here, though. That's that's progress. Mm -hmm. um, and then joining us for the first time, we have uh, someone who's not unfamiliar to the the Maryland recaps. Um, in fact, the only person from this panel who actually watched live during All Stars, so <laughs> there is that. Uh, but Brian Scally, how are you doing? I'm good. Took a break from sleeping more than 12 hours at a time to show up <laughs> here, uh, talk about possibly my favorite season of Survivor. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's a big um, one. Only behind La Plata, right? Yeah, there you go. That's season one. I know. <laughs> I'm a super fan. Yes. Now you kind of are. It's like, I can't even make the jokes anymore. <laughs> I, I feel like watching one fan-made Survivor season makes you a super fan automatically. Especially if you podcast about every episode of it. <laughs> yeah. You're in the top 1%. Thank you. Um, anyway, so uh, we have a lot to talk about today. Um, looks like a bunch of people joining us, so that is exciting. Uh, certainly, I think everyone always is eager to hear things about the Terra Trials finale, because I've called it the most polarizing episode of Survivor Maryland. I don't... I don't know if that's the right word. It's just I think it has the most – there's just so many opinions about it, and um, most of which I think are totally valid, and it's a it's a, a complicated finale. It's certainly an emotional finale, um, but I'm interested to hear what you guys all have to say about it. Um, we've said this up in previous podcasts, but just in case you were not tuning in, um, so Lita came into the season knowing the winner. So, Kirk, yay, Terry's the winner. We, we know now. We can say it. Um, yay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Lita knew that Terry was going to win, which uh, I always think is an interesting perspective to watch the season on because especially watching it live, and I tried to edit this way too, I would have had 0% idea that Terry would win going into the finale. Uh, meanwhile, Derek came in, as far as I know, totally unspoiled. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a totally different perspective on watching the finale. So I'm very interested to hear both of those. And Sam and Scally, I think, have both – well, I know they've both seen the finale before, but you know, it's always interesting from a rewatch perspective too. So – should have a good range of opinions on this one. Let's start with Lita. Where do you want to, where, what was your, what's your initial reaction? Um, this was homophobic. <laughs> this was misogynistic. <laughs> this was racist. This was horrible. I hated 
everything about this outcome. I, the Victoria Faluke fight is like one thing, but it would have been worth it if it's like, wow, look at how much these women sacrificed for one of them to come on top. But it's just like, they sacrificed all this to come in second and third for no goddamn reason. Okay. Up upsetting. Okay. <laughs> I, I didn't say too that I also think I, but being there is a totally different perspective on this too. And especially, honestly, for both things, although I uh, will get into this, but I wasn't actually there for a lot for some of the sundial challenge, which is a, a totally different dynamic, which I think probably if I was there, it definitely could go very differently. So um, anyway, Derek, for you watching through the first time, having no idea what was going to happen, what were your initial reactions? Right. It's weird because usually I would be 100% with Lita. I'm a, like, I only want women to win. Like it's yes, this is noted about me. However, <laughs> for whatever reason, this felt like I felt like I was transported back to like young Derek, young in terms of watching survivor Derek, I should say. Um, so like, like two years ago, yeah, like <laughs> 2017, 2016, <laughs> that time. But when it was like, okay, for a man to win, like, oh, hey, yeah, whatever. This is just how sometimes Survivor wins and not, oh, this is how Survivor always wins or ends. Um, I think that just is a testament to the editing, um, a testament to like how this season seemed like, I don't know, everything that could possibly go right in terms of what is the best like dramatic storytelling thing that could happen is what actually happens. Um, like this final four, like I didn't want Zach to be in final four. I wanted Marissa to be in final four. However, like, it, like in terms of storytelling, it should have been that who Katana four, and it's like a more powerful, better season because of that. So a very complicated, like on paper, I should hate what happened, but I think just, I don't know. The storytelling was so good that I, I was satisfied. So, yeah. Wow, Derek, you're being called out. Uh, Alex, <laughs> oh, shit, whatever. Um, that's, I think, a, a valid perspective on it as well. Um, Sam, as as uh, I don't know how many, have you, is this the second time you've seen it? Is it? I don't know what you're... Uh... This is the second time I've watched any season or episode, probably, of like Survivor Maryland. This uh, was the first season I watched when I was getting into the show. And I said it then, and I'm like, it still pains me to say it now, but like, yeah, like I could, I like understand why things ended up the way they did. And it's tough watching the voting confessionals of the jurors being like, I was coming into this voting for Faluke, but like the way she acted tonight uh, makes me want to vote for Terry. And then ultimately going from a 5 2 win to a 5 2 lose is heartbreaking to say the least. <laughs> but uh, I, it's, it's, it's such a good, great season of the show and such an incredible episode of the show. I've said many times a day, this is one of the best episodes of Survivor, including the CBS show, like ever put out by anybody. This is peak TV. There's a CBS show? Yeah, I've never, <laughs> I don't know. It ended in season 32, so. <laughs> oh, right, right. Yeah. Um, Brian Scally. So those those backstory behind Scally going on or being on this, besides that Scally is just great in general, but uh, <laughs> one of the early things that I knew about Scally was that I think when somebody said people were like going through Survivor Maryland for the first time and saying they were watching the Terrapin Trials finale, Scally would always say, let me know because I have a policy that I need to actually watch with you. So <laughs> that was one of the first character traits I knew about you. So um, yeah. I don't know how many times you've watched it, but it's kind um, of big. It's probably at least parts of it, at least four or five six times okay. <laughs> especially like the from the um final immunity challenge on um came into it where i actually watched this before i knew austin and then we had like hung out for like two three days whatever it was like oh yeah by the way i love survivor maryland and this is my favorite season <laughs> and, uh, so and then from that point on when everyone's re-watching it's like oh no i will re-watch the finale every time someone's watching it and it's good every time so big fan. Did you have any different perspective this time versus the other times? Uh, for me, it's definitely interesting watching it where like, especially the first time uh, it was before I, uh, before I guess Survivor as a whole fell apart. But um, <laughs> before I was more okay with like, wow, this was like a great journey and like storytelling and everything. And like, uh, not everything has to end super well. And while I like loved some of these characters, like they don't have to win in order for me to like still enjoy this story. Cause like, that's how life is. And so I, that's why I've always said like, this is my favorite season of survivor Maryland 
until All Stars, and I still go back and forth on those two. But uh, it's definitely interesting on the rewatch. Yeah, um, I will. I will chime in too with my perspective because, and this is where someone chimes in either "f you, Austin" or "shut up, Austin." But uh, <laughs> whatever your Austin. preference is, the what? <laughs> hashtag "f you, Austin." Yes, yes. Hashtag <laughs> "f you, Austin." Um, so living through this in the moment was, I feel like, a very different experience than even watching it back. Um, where, and and something I want to set up too with this is that it, because it's, there's kind of two, the two major things I think that are the, the most complicated to talk about are the Fluge Victoria dynamic in general, which I think the whole season is framed around, and then also the final tribal. And the Fluge Victoria thing is what's stuck in my mind more is like, these are two characters who are so defining and so compelling in a bunch, bunch of different ways. And just as people, I, I really um, have enjoyed getting to know both of them. Um, but the final tribal was the part that I hadn't, um, doesn't, I guess I like put in the back of my mind more cause it's like a, a little bit, well, I don't know. I neither is very fun to talk about, but anyway, the point is final tribal, I think, especially there's a lot of interesting perspectives that I think are totally valid to say about how the jury handled things, how the finals handled things, what the outcome was. And that was the hardest thing I've ever had to do in terms of trying to get into an edit because it went on for three hours. Like it was insane the whole way through and like in particular i think it's hard to it was very hard to sum up feluke's final tribal because of those three hours she probably talked for two and a half of them and i i think it's it's hard to put in perspective especially for the jurors of like th this was like a it was very exhausting to to go through the whole thing and so i think there's nuanced perspectives of all of it that we'll talk through but um that is something i want to say is that i never feel like the edit totally captures what happened in that final tribal because if i had it would be so long to watch it already was a two hour finale it would have been like a four hour finale so it's very difficult in that regard but i think there still are, are interesting things to talk through and um a lot of things are not a great look for a lot of people um maybe even myself included so um let's start off um do you i'll, I'll turn this i'll turn this over to lita because i think i think your perspective is interesting to start with um do you want to start with the final tribal and the outcome there or the kind of whole fluke victoria dynamic in general um are we skipping the first tribal council of this episode? We can certainly go to that. I think that was the most straightforward from like a game perspective. Um, well, I, I just wanted to comment on like Zach's kind of downfall before we yeah. get into like the heavy stuff because- we can, we can do that. I think the theme of the finale is why everyone lost except for Harry. <laughs> so starting off yeah. with Zach is I think a valid one to do. But I just think like it's part of a broader theme that Zach is all annoyed that Feluke didn't give the idol to Marissa because he's like, if he if she had given it to Marissa, then they could have chosen who goes home as long as it's not me or Terry, which leaves only Victoria. And he's like all indignant about that. So I feel like there is kind of like this theme of like blaming Feluke for stuff that isn't her fault at all and doesn't make sense. Like, yeah, obviously looking back, she should have played it on Marissa, but why would she trust Zach when Zach is like, I'm letting you choose to vote for Victoria. Instead yeah, of just voting with them. The what? Instead of just voting with them like that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, right. Um, yeah, it was it was a strange, a strange uh thing there for sure. I, I don't know what the um it was not much of a choice for sure, but I think I think that. Well, maybe, maybe this is a good point to talk starting in final four with like Fluke in the finale. And I think that that was the, the roller coaster of Fluke's emotions combined with her um, different perspective and sort of like her missions that she had on what she wanted to do. So, you know, we start off with final four and she's basically like, I feel wrong for being selfish in this last vote and not giving up my idol. And now I think I'm going to quit. Um, I guess, Lita, what did you think of kind of the, the, the various kind of like perspectives that Fluka had on what her goal was in the game. So whatever her goal was in the game changed to be very convenient to what seemed like was achievable. You know, like as soon as it's clear that she's not going to win, suddenly she has to want to win and she just wants a girl to win and she wants to help Victoria win. And then as soon as it seems like it's that she maybe does have a chance to win, her goal is to win again. And it's it. The thing about like people who on Survivor who say that like their integrity is worth more than the game is that they're gonna lose anyway. So when people realize they're gonna lose, or a lot of time, a lot of the time this happens after they get voted out, 
is when they're like, well, it, my character was worth more was more important than this game. It was worth more than this game. So it all just seemed a little convenient. I was not pleased with her um, with her quitting threat or any of that. Um, that said, I obviously think she should have won over Terry, and we'll get into that. Um, but I was not impressed with uh, Faluke's ever shifting goals. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's a, a thing to get into to start is that. You know, I think if you're going to talk about who played the better game in the course of the season, I think everyone would say it. I think people who, even the jurors who did not vote for her who watched the season later were like, oh yeah, Fluke definitely played a better game than Terry. I don't think anyone would argue that overall from what we saw and what we watched happen. Um, now, I guess... I mean, I don't know about that. Like, she <laughs> didn't win. And well, she, like, I, I just don't, I don't agree that everybody would say that she absolutely played but, a better game. That she played a better Terry. strategic game, maybe. Yeah. Well, so my, my next question, my question leading into that, though, was, and you can start, Sam, you can start, is did she deserve to win? I mean, she deserved to win going into the night. I, they both were clearly deserving winners because the jury, the jury shifted their opinion based on who they thought should win. I think they both played good games. Like, Faluke played more game, but Terry clearly played a good enough game to win. I think the only thing is that, like, that's true, but there is also an element of, like, when you are a Black woman and somebody comes in calling you a crazy bitch and everybody's agreeing, obviously that's putting you at an unfair disadvantage emotionally answering those questions. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a rough start. <laughs> there is a lot of the B word being thrown around. That, right nobody right. would have ever said that to to <laughs> obviously to a man, but also I think to to a lot of white women that were on the season if they had played this. It's just it was I I couldn't believe it. I think it it totally was it rattled Fluke in a way that I generally feel like the person who won like deserve to win or whatever. And also like we all stand bitter jurors, obviously the podcast and the concept, like I don't mind a bitter jury, but I feel like when it's tinged with something that is so obviously directed towards somebody's identity that is not within their control, it, it shifts it to not just be like bitter, but they're also biased. No, right. outside of the game. Right. I agree. <laughs> no, yeah, I, uh, I'm, I don't know. I am usually of Sam's mind of like whoever won played the best game, but I feel like, like if I'm just looking at the games they played, like I think Faluke was just a stronger survivor player in general. Like the reason I was like so like, haha, Terry, he's great at the beginning is because I had thought he had no way of winning. <laughs> like I was like, oh whatever, he's just a goofy character. Who cares? Like he clearly is like the second banana or third banana or fourth banana in whatever group he's in. Second Jarvis. Um, yes. <laughs> um so like but yeah I think Fluke I agree with Lita. Like yeah Fluke obviously just had like so much more going against her, not just in terms of like her identity and like I just think everything in these la everything since Holly left is like it just feels like everything is there to just rattle Fluke specifically and make her like get off of this like she was like running most of the game so it's like I don't know like multiple rugs were pulled out from under her like just go these last few episodes it's hard to watch and it sucks that she doesn't get rewarded for that but like I mean Terry it's good for Terry for taking advantage of that I guess if that's a good thing you can praise but I mean his goal is to win so I can't blame him for doing that yeah. I, I think yeah, go ahead, Sky. What I was gonna say is like uh, I was gonna joke like, oh wow, I, like uh, I don't believe like I believe in like bitter juries as a concept, but like uh, whoever like won, no one like deserves more so than the other. Like if you convince the jury to vote for you, like good job, you won. But I don't think that necessarily means you played the best game. I just think it means you did what you had to do. Um, but I liked what Lita said about like this wasn't a bitter jury as much as it was like a biased jury that came in like with a preconceived notion of like who Faluke was. And like, she didn't necessarily help herself, but like in the um, final tribal council and where you can like see where it gets away from her at points, but it also was like, there was so much against her where like that was able to happen also. So it's rough. I think, I think it's hard. And I think both things can be true that, I think Lita makes a really good point that to me, like, God, when Alex said that question, I was like, what the fuck? Like, that, 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 to, to start that off sets a tone for Tribal that 
as the first juror does a lot. And I think, I think is totally correct. Did on, did kind of rattle her in a way that most people don't have to deal with. Um, and I think that, you know, having like kind of it softened by Holly Marissa later on helps steer it. But the, at the same time, like, um, you know, the jury, and we saw this at the end, did come in for the majority of them thinking they were going to vote for Fluke. And it's, it's an interesting thing because a lot of times I think, I think one of the most prominent forms of sexism in Survivor is when people assume that a woman wrote a man's coattails. Um, that's something that we see a lot and kind of definitely affects final tribal outcomes and how people are viewed. That is definitely not the case of what people thought in this. And so that one at least is off the table, I think. Um, but a lot of people talked about... Um, Faluke not kind of owning her game. And I think we talked about this in one of the, some of the past recaps is that to us, it was very evident. And to a few people, it was very evident that Faluke was in control for a lot of the game. But that isn't necessarily that easy to see for other people. Um, and so that, uh, I don't know. I mean, I think one thing Terry did really well is that he had a, it was very simple, but I think it was a coherent narrative that made sense. Um, but likely to said, a lot of that might have, for Faluke not being able to do that, might have been because of being rattled at the same time, it also might be, you know, I feel like it was hard for Faluke to have a sense of herself. She was kind of battling throughout the whole finale, especially what her motivations were and likely to said very convenient. Um, I was going towards a question here. I don't remember what it was, but somebody <laughs> thought I'd chime in. I, I understand and agree with everything everybody has said. I just feel like there are clear facts. Like there are just so many times throughout the season where Fluke makes things so personal with other people outside of the game. And just like, I agree that the jury was probably biased, but they also were going into the game, into the night, expecting to vote for her to win. And just like the way she's, the, this is a, a lot of the stuff she says to people is just like very, especially Victoria at the end and the final challenge is just like too far. And that's just like, what, like it's, that's all I'm trying to say. I definitely agree with that, but I also feel like even if this wasn't the case, what it probably felt like to Fluke was the jury was asking her to say, yeah, I'm a crazy bitch and I did horrible things. And nobody at 18 is going to publicly feel comfortable owning that. They were asking, for, they went in being like, yeah, I'll vote for her if she does this totally unreasonable thing that we can't expect anybody to do in the moment that she was blindsided by, I feel. And they can call it owning her game, but really they wanted her to to agree with them that she was a crazy bitch. Yeah, they wanted her to own their per, like perception of her and it's yeah. not a good perception. <laughs> <You're> right. right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is weird. I don't know. If they um, had come in like, and the problem is that there's no male equivalent of crazy bitch. Like if they had come right. in and like said something, if Alex had come in and been like, Fluke, you're a crazy bitch. Terry, you're a boring slut. Like, <laughs> it, I don't know, but like it wasn't that. Yeah, I think Alex says crazy bitch and indifferent frat guy, which is which such not the same. wildly not different same. levels of. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. So, for maybe this is a good time to transition into some of the final three stuff as well. So for me, I know kind of seeing all of it and going through it, I also thought, you know, Fluke is, as I've said before, I would have thought Terry had a 0% chance of winning. I didn't think he played a, a winning game and certainly the jury did not respect him. And there was a lot of talk in the finale and from the jury that Fluke was this big social threat and jury threat. When someone, you know, and and kind of the factors into this, I think are fair, but you know, one of the comments Fluke made was, "I wanted to punch you in the face sometimes, but I didn't want to kill you." And so, like, when things like that are a final tribal, I mean, for me, I I lost some respect in terms of some of the way that personal stuff was brought to the game. And when you kind of muddy the waters with that, it's hard to just vote purely on who played the better game or strategy. And so that's that's one thing for me, at least, that I was like, "Well, I am comfortable with this outcome now," even though I wouldn't have thought I was going into it. Um, what do we think about kind of, you know, like, is there something Fluke could have done within reason that would have gotten her the win here and would have earned kind of the respect or would have earned your respect? It's hard. I don't know. It's hard to say because it's like Terry kind of has the luxury of just being able to sit back and let Fluke say whatever, because like, like most of the game, he really didn't get to know these people very well. Like, um, like he has that luxury of like, Hey, whatever. I'm just the happy go lucky survivor fan. Maybe you didn't get to know me that well, but Hey, at least you don't hate me as much as this girl who put in the work of getting to know all of you. But that of course led her to being 
more disliked by you people because she had to vote you off. And like, just her, her personality is like a more forward, like she'll say what she thinks. So it's like, she's naturally going to inspire more passion from these people than he will. And so I think in this scenario that m led to more of an advantage for him because he could just let her say whatever she had to say. And then he could come across as like the more level headed of the two, whether or not that's like actually the case. But yeah, I just think he had an advantage, like not being there as much as her was kind of an advantage for him, I would say. Yeah, I also think that it's really understandable like how Faluke responded. And like, I know that you like the, in terms of like the, like, oh, I wanted to punch you in the face, but I didn't want to kill you and stuff like that. Like, I feel like it's really easy to get to that point really once you have like the three men going first and like how they came at her. Like, it's really easy to be like, okay, well, Victoria's never voting for me. Zach's never voting for me. This is how these three men just already approached me. Like, screw it. I'm going to say what I want at this point. Like, I'm, I'm losing. So may as well. <laughs> and like, yeah. I don't blame her there. Mm -hmm. Agree. Yeah. I think, um, I guess one of the themes I saw in this and also that you can kind of tie back to the whole season is that Terrapin Trials for me was a lot about the emotional toll that Survivor can take on, at least this version of Survivor can take on people in terms of your mental stress, your emotional stress, your relationships, the stress it puts on. It caused me, I was exhausted by the end of the season. Like I, I was pretty broken down by it and took a break from hosting Survivor after that. Like I think that you can kind of see that in everybody here and maybe the reason Terry won is because his stress was earlier than everybody else's. And he kind of like came out of that at the very end and he was sort of free from all the burdens compared to other people. Um, but uh, we certainly saw that I think most kind of hit fluke. And I, I think, I feel like part of it is that she, you know, didn't know whether like she, she wanted to have the image of, she didn't know what to expect from survivor. Like she wanted to come out of this being liked as a person and also liked as a player. And it's hard to do both of those all the time. Um, the let's go back to kind of the, the whole fluke and Victoria conflict. Cause again, I think they were the whole story of the season. And what do you think, and maybe we can start with Lita. What do you think about the perspectives? We saw these very different perspectives from Victoria saying, I'm going to separate and really compartmentalize the game and personal life and fluke talking about kind of merging those things together. Um, but it's kind of unclear when those things did first merge together because there was a whole roommate situation. So what was your thought on kind of those two? different perspectives. Yeah. So I obviously think that there is overlap between Survivor and the real world. Like that's just true. You're playing in college. You're not separated on an island. And even when you are on an island, we've seen how Survivor All-Stars played out. Like personal relationships matter and they matter outside the game. Um, but I, I don't think that Victoria was compartmentalizing as much as she may be said that she was like I do think that she cared about Fluke as a friend and I think what was hard was that like ob like obviously Fluke was sort of saying that she was upset about stuff that wasn't necessarily what she was really upset about like I think that she was just sort of upset with the general state of her and Victoria's friendship and feeling like Victoria didn't really care about her and then she was using other things like the roommate thing um and Victoria not supporting her to get further in the game as sort of like reasons. But I think it was just more of a general thing. And like, I'm the queen of this. I'm the queen of like being really upset about something and like blaming it on other little stuff. Um, just so I can kind of like verbalize it because it's harder to say like, I'm very upset generally about this thing that you can't do anything about. But I think it was hard because I don't know if Faluke even believed what she was saying at certain points. Like there's a point where Faluke is like, there, there was a time when you wanted to do anything for me to win and now you don't even care, but it's like Fluke, you already told her that you don't want to win and that you're going to put everything into Victoria winning. So why would she now lay down her torch for you to win? Like it didn't make any sense. And I think Fluke probably knew that. I think she was just really upset, really heated and just like everything was coming out. Um, and I think she just felt kind of abandoned by Victoria and whether that was fair or not, it was, valid for her to feel that way. Um, but I, I do think a lot of the specific things that she was accusing her of, especially like when she's, she doesn't tell Victoria what she wants her to apologize for. And I think that was like really the root of the issue was that like Victoria couldn't address anything because all of the sort of specific accusations that Fluke was lobbying didn't have to do with the major root issue. So Victoria couldn't actually address what the problem was. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think that like just speaks to like their personality differences. Like um, Fluke, like the way she talks about it, I get like at Final Tribal is like, I just wanted you to apologize, like just say the words I'm sorry. And like clearly that had like, she's talking about like the value that just that act has for her. Um, whereas Victoria is like, from what I could tell just from like this little glimpse into her world, <laughs> Um, it's like, she seems like more like someone will, like, I would apologize. I just don't know what you want me to apologize for. Like a more, um, I don't want to, not really logical. I don't know what word to use to describe that, but she needed like a more concrete thing to apologize for, for her to feel good about apologizing for it. Um, so I think that just spoke to like, that's just two different personalities, like butting heads. And it's also like, these are literally like college freshmen like we're expecting a lot of emotional intelligence from like te literal teenagers, teenagers and it's yeah. like i don't even really have that like <laughs> i wouldn't expect that level of emotional intelligence for myself in normal life let alone under these kind of circumstances so yeah it's just tough to watch because you can tell like they seemed like really good friends and they may still be friends i don't know like so it's just tough to see that kind of fall apart i don't know don't laugh <laughs> i really don't know <laughs> But yeah. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, and this is what I always, because I remember when I first um, was like started speaking to like Austin and other people about um, Survivor Maryland, there was like a big argument. I felt like a lot of the conversation was really between like two or four was going to, was like the favorite seasons kind of at a point. And my thing was always like, no, three is my favorite. Like I will remember that scene for ever because like you cannot get that like it, i know like returning player seasons like there are relationships but like so, like that is something unique to like what survivor maryland can get the fact that it plays over so many days that it plays with like real friendships with like uh, you know kids essentially so it was like very like a look into that and i relate in with like victoria where it's like i want to understand what i'm apologizing for and if i don't feel like i did anything wrong or like let's say like it is like Faluke is upset about how the game is going or about the friendship or about whatever it is. Like I'll apologize. Like if you feel like I was a bad, but like I'm not apologizing for the game. Like that's not what, like that's not something I did wrong. So I understand it from like both perspectives in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Survivor Maryland is interesting because I mean, on normal survivor, they're completely removed from their everyday life, but on survivor Maryland, they are forced to continue to live their everyday life while playing the strategic game. And in that comes a lot more socializing and social activity that they are able to get with the other players potentially. And I guess, I mean, it sounds like Faluke and Victoria lived literally next door to each other. So it was like they were living their everyday life, seeing each other every single day, creating this bond and like over the semester of college. Um, and so like, they 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 were forced to be both in the game which is what everyone was doing but they pro they must have created a much bigger or more dynamic bond together because they lived so physically close to one another and i can understand why like they would they would get so much more hurt over like i don't know just like jealousy and friendships like especially relating to fluke's roommate just like it that's just like a factor that doesn't play anywhere else yeah Faluke yeah. also said something that that really struck with me about like I'll, I'll just accept that like I don't fit in with our floor or like nobody on our floor cares about me or whatever because when you're a freshman in college like that's your year to kind of like find your place and find your group and for for her it was sort of like maybe Victoria was like a connection to those other people into that community and to her it's like if you don't kind of like find your niche or you feel like you don't fit in your freshman year of college it's like pretty devastating because you you think like this is going to be like my whole new life and i know i had a terrible freshman year of college and it felt like oh my god i have to do three more years of this and i thought college was going to be amazing and actually it's like it's like really traumatizing to like <laughs> have a terrible freshman year of college. So I feel like for her, if it was sort of like, wow, Survivor, like either sort of ruined my potential connection or um, Survivor was good because it exposed that these people weren't my real friends. Either way, that's a very harsh truth. And I can see how it would be um, very, very challenging for Faluke to separate this from 
her real life when it influenced her real life in her freshman year of college so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to make it clear too, like Danny asked me this earlier, you know, he was like, when you were kind of seeing this come together, were you like, oh my God, I like, this is TV gold. Absolutely not. Like this is, (laughs) this is not a, there's no money involved in this. I'm not making anything like I, I, it was very uncomfortable to watch. And, and I think that the part that you'd certainly get hinted at, especially with the roommate, but that was underlying all of it is that there are these freshman year conflicts on the floor and that, um, Victoria definitely was getting closer with Fluke's roommate and Fluke's roommate and her and Fluke didn't get along very well at that point. And I, I honestly don't know the exact details of it. and I don't want to speak to them, but there certainly was a lot of tension and people splitting apart on the floor. And yeah, that's a, that's a really hard thing that kind of dominates your whole approach to life. That's hard to not factor in. And so I remember when the season was first getting kind of discussed in the aftermath, uh, or even at, just as like, as I was living through it, I was kind of gravitating towards like, if there's a side, if it's a Fluke versus Victoria thing, like I, I, I kind of empathize a lot with Victoria and that just, it seemed to me to come out of nowhere, but that's because I didn't know the backstory to the full extent. And so seeing, you know, reflecting on it more, I think that there are so many valid things about what both of them are feeling. And there's a lot that's factoring to what um, Fluke is bringing up there. And, and, you know, I also thought that there was a lot um, to me, some of it felt, especially in kind of the hindsight of, or knowing what, the shifting things were of like, I want Victoria to win. So I want a girl to win. So I want me to win. A lot of it felt very intentional in terms of, I know that I can drive Fluke off the sundial with this. And if that's the case, I think that brings kind of an edge to it. That's tough. Um, but again, thinking about the hindsight, I don't think that's it at all. They were there in the rain for hours. It's just really raw, like emotional moments. And that, that is what is so compelling about it. But yeah, it's, it's definitely very uncomfortable. The hardest part for me was I think the final three tribal conversation was very different in that, I think that Fluke had the upper hand there at that point. She'd won immunity. She has the, the game advantage and was still sort of coming after Victoria in a very personal sense. And that's to me where it flipped a little bit where I lost. I, I didn't feel like that was as necessary, nor was it even getting to the root of what the actual issue was. But um, you all talked about kind of the hard part about the apologizing. And I just want to hear the words, I'm sorry. And I I think it speaks to how different Fluke and Victoria are. Fluke is a talker and wants to interact with all the people and please people. And I think that she is the kind of person who would talk through that very openly. Whereas Victoria chooses her words a lot more carefully, um, is more reserved. And so she's not, you know, not the kind of person who's just going to say things, just to say things if she doesn't know. Um, but we can certainly ask Victoria's perspective on that as she comes on. So we will get to that shortly. Um, what other thoughts that we had off the top that we wanted to bring up there from the finale? Austin, did you have them use a scented marker to vote for the winner of Survivor <laughs> Terrapin Trials? I, maybe. <laughs> That's what it looked like. That fully looked like a Mr. Sketch orange scented marker. I, you know, I don't I thought really it might have been a, a Greg Buis tribute. Is he, the, is he the one who smelled the marker? Yeah. I think so. <laughs> also, yeah. Austin, um, I couldn't help but notice at the very beginning at the top, you used to have more of a Maryland accent than you do now, which doesn't make sense because you still live in Maryland. What did I say? (laughs) You just had more of a Maryland accent. You're like about to see what's on this episode. (laughs) Like, it's just something I I know. I might be going back to it because I have found myself, maybe that I'm in Baltimore now, but I feel like I've been saying like coffee more. Yeah, you yeah. you just uh, had a little bit more of it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't um, notice. Speaking of that, and I didn't notice until this episode. But uh, is it does Faluka refer to her stole like the idol she stole from Zach's roommate as this John? Is that what she said? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, we're really in Maryland. I love. We that. are on the <laughs> Eastern Seaboard. <laughs> yeah, that was great. Yeah, I'm trying to think of like happy lighthearted things that happened yeah <laughs> also um zach's final words made me laugh out loud i'm not illiterate i mean i'm not gonna <laughs> do alliteration <laughs> okay, um, i also liked uh i mean i the flat tire thing always was a fun thing it really took them quite a long time i i think that the uh um, one of the tribes on guts and glory should be called like flat tire or something some <laughs> sort of islandization of flat tire right yeah. Wait. Okay. Um, what? Wait, wait. I when they were at the sundial, what part of the Survivor <laughs> Maryland Outback were you showing them? Like, why did? Why did? Wait. We're, like, what yeah. led to wa- them watching part of the first or second season? <laughs> of the had, why did just released. I think I had just released like the final nine or something of Maryland Outback, and they always were like, you know, like, can we like listen to music and we can do something while we're standing here? And I'm always like, no. And then they're like, well, can we watch the Survivor Maryland episode? And I was like. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. All right. I'll- <laughs> you, I, did, I did include Fluke uh, being a fan of Siona. Yeah, I was like, uh, me too. But I was like, it was out of nowhere. And I, I, I obviously didn't pick up on it the first time because I didn't know who Siona was. But now it's like, what is going on? Victoria and Fluke were like, Trump will take our clothes off for a Survivor Maryland episode. <laughs> it was Terry's very, like, um, get these girls some Outback. <laughs> Shades of Jeff Probst showing Kylie Wigglesworth the first episode <laughs> in a bar. <laughs> in the Survivor bar. Pulled out your credit card. Yeah. Um, Austin, uh, I don't know if we're, we're doing a separate quotes, but I would be remiss if I didn't mention that a lot of times when you're a boss ass bitch, a lot of people want to come for you. Yeah, I did like that one a lot. Yeah. Um, um, that might be her other tombstone besides Peace, Love, and Beyonce. Wait, who am I talking to? No one's here. <laughs> Wait, was- who am I talking to? <laughs> no one is at your funeral. <laughs> so funny and great improv from Steve. Like, yeah. Just, That's yeah, perfect. Gonna <laughs> there you know who Steve is. He's even always this Survivor Maryland player. Yeah. I have a- quick question on because uh, i didn't remember this but like in the uh like you know what you said was an 11 minute recap of the season <laughs> um <laughs> that, I skipped that. I'm sorry. <laughs> to be reminded that terry actually had very recently won least likable and least deserving to be in the game on the coconut top challenge and then to go to winning a few short episodes later and was curious like obviously you were the only one there in the moment and like how much of that was him actually improving his perception um, in the game versus uh, other people, you know, kind of tail ending towards the end. Um, I think that I think that he was more present at the end and um, did gain some favor. That and the, the people who were at the end of the jury, like Zach and Victoria, really did like Terry a lot. Like they, mm-hmm. it wasn't just like anti fluke stuff. There, they they did actually really like Terry throughout the whole game um, and and knew him a lot better than the other people. So that helped with a couple of them. I think that part of it too with Terry's final tribal is that he came in. Um, it's like people came in having thinking Terry played zero game, and so the expectation it's you know low expectations are always the key to surprising people. Um, he came on with a clear narrative and picture and had examples for them, and yeah. those were easy to speak to. And I, I found that in final tribals, like if you try to fit in, if you did seventy five game moves, it's the jury only remembers one or two, mm-hmm. and so like and they're not like you can't convince them over things that they were also part of too. And so having the very clear one like Zach, I think is actually pretty strong. So I think that honestly, most of it got flipped at final tribal, but even though he got least likable, I think that was just because people know him. I don't think anybody actively disliked him, which mm-hmm. is always a bit of a different perspective that you could improve on. Yeah. Like, he wasn't like Harry and everybody changed. And all of a sudden well, Harry is this super not annoying, likable guy. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, I, I also, oh, so go ahead. Oh, I was just going to speak to the fact that that's when I started thinking Terry was going to win was after that. It felt very uh, winner's edit E of like, <laughs> oh, this is where the story is going. Okay, I see you, Austin. Yeah. I did the best I could. <laughs> yeah, it was great. I, yeah. I've well, always said I would not, I mean, there are a lot of outcomes for the season that don't include that. Um, I'm okay with Terry as a winner in its own right. Like, I, I like Terry, but certainly wouldn't want that every season. Um, yeah. The, uh, the do, we haven't talked about this yet, but this always does get brought up a lot. Faluke's phone on the phone confession voting mm-hmm. confession <laughs> at final. Four. I thought she was doing a bit. Me too. <laughs> she was oh, actually God. on the phone. Oh wait, she was. Me? Yeah, she had this thing. I feel like I don't. I I thought I included a clip of it somewhere, but she had a, a really good friend that she would talk to a lot while she did her confessionals, and he would just chime in a little bit on confessionals and be like, "Oh yeah, I like <laughs> that idea. I want to be that friend for her." <laughs> <laughs> She I would love used... to get personalized Faluke confessionals. <laughs> um, she also, cameo. Well, yeah, I was going to ask, is Faluke on cameo? <laughs> <laughs> she did. Um, we could ask. But she, uh, she, the reason the, the confessionals are so bad quality for her sometimes is because she would just text me every day with the confessionals, and they get lowered quality when you text them. So <laughs> I would just get, like, like, my deal. So cute. Uh, cutting out a little bit. Austin's dying on us. I'm glad it's not my computer. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) All of us collectively like, Okay, I'm Austin now. Yeah, the mice will play. This is great. Um, (laughs) Did you guys notice that there were eggs in the challenge? That's my favorite thing, because I'm Austin, and I love eggs. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I don't know what just happened. Yeah, (laughs) He's back. 
Yay. Uh, where were we? Did you guys fill in? We were talking yeah, about we eggs. talked about eggs. Oh, we had so much fun. I'm so sad you weren't here. <laughs> me sucking them. Um, the uh, I don't even remember what happened. Um, the phone. Oh, oh, oh. She also had. You know, in the how the Max used to be like you guys had the setting where it was like it's five o'clock. Huh? She had to come on. <laughs> There's a, like a voice that speaks to you from the time. That's weird. Okay. Okay. Your word for it. Um. Any other uh, quotes that? <laughs> and that's that on. End of I, thought. I <laughs> like. I remember that. I mean, I could like recite every Faluke confessional. Like everyone was good. <laughs> the only feminist in her room is Beyonce now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. Um, Peace, love, Beyonce is also going on my tombstone. <laughs> I, I feel like you tweeted you. That was a, an early scally. Uh, it was. <laughs> in, uh, yeah. Twitter pick. Um, yeah. The, we... the final Fluke confessional, I don't know who posted it, but it was the first thing I ever saw from Survivor Maryland and was one of the things that obviously convinced me to start watching the show. Uh, also loved the quote, love Marissa's voting confessional. We were both voted number eight, and now I get to vote for you to be number one. It's great wordplay. <laughs> That She's so, so cute. Adorable. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. And I um, agree with Austin when he said, like, Holly and Marissa, like, still stumping for Faluke by the end was great. Because Faluke did earn their votes, like, very securely. Like, it's not surprising at all that they voted for her because she, like, made them feel great about being in an alliance with her. Yeah, yeah Marissa didn't even have a question. She just said, Faluke, when I, I was writing Eric's coattails this entire game, so when he went out, <laughs> I felt very lost and you pulled me in. Thank you for that. And then she oh, sat down. Oh. So cute. It was, it was adorable. She's yeah. the best. Love that. <laughs> Lita still is on the middle of the road. Oh, and Marissa, yeah, I don't know. Did you find out if she was my coworker? No, I I forgot to ask you. Yeah. <laughs> I promise I will. Yeah, um, Marissa I, and Eric feel very Big Brothery, by the way. Like those two of anyone on this cast, I was like, you two should have be on Big Brother Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> That's just that you think that they're hot. Do I? <laughs> the people on Survivor are way hotter than the people on Big Brother. But the people yeah, on Big Brother are, are Harry, more conventionally hello. hot. Maybe he should be on Big Brother Canada, Maryland. <laughs> then he would yeah, be the Austin, hottest do you Canada. have that? Uh, I'll, have to, I'll have to ask them about that. <laughs> it's just like Big Brother, but there's a better host and the people are better. Mm -hmm. Ouch. True. <laughs> um, the uh, well, going back to the the speech before final tribal, a couple things I thought uh, were worth noting. One was, um, uh, I will say I'm doing it for Asian woman. Maybe that one, maybe maybe strike. I mean, not one. not one Asian woman. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the rest very of them. but <laughs> you know, um, all of them. I yeah, but otherwise, I, I wanted to say, uh, Lita, did you want to add uh, both Madeline Hauk and Faluke's teacher to the cancellation list? <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Fluke has pointed out several times this season why the feminist movement failed, but this one was actually true. <laughs> the feminist movement did not fail because Holly was voted out or whatever she said. Before. I don't know. <laughs> that sounds right to me. Yeah. <laughs> it's, maybe in retrospect, yeah, she was correct. Um, but I do feel like she hit the nail on the head about the feminist movement this time. We all got a women's studies education from Faluke that uh, leaving out black women is the failure of the feminist movement, as well as leaving out people that were kicked off the of sports teams, which yeah. is a, a huge underrepresented minority that she's doing it for, and people with arthritis. Yes. Body I always remember arthritis. That's the one that sticks out to me. Yes, I and student body presence. Thank, thank you, yes. no, student thank body my favorite. <laughs> student body presence is my favorite. Intersectionality um, is doing things for Black women, student body, student body presidents, and people with arthritis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the That's three what genders. Paul Hooks was talking about. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, I see you're sitting in the call here. So why don't we, um, as long as everyone's good with it, let's bring on Victoria, who's been waiting 48 minutes. So. <laughs> <laughs> We can bring her on once and uh, once and for all. Um, so here she is, joining us from from, from the United Kingdom. Legend. <laughs> hey. uh, it's Victoria. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I actually wasn't sitting in the waiting room for forty. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> but you almost were. Yeah, um, my boyfriend is very excited in the comments. He was he had watched none of the season until this episode, and he was rooting for you hardcore in that immunity, oh, Final Four immunity. Okay, <laughs> so. but literally me watching All Stars, <laughs> Victoria in the room. 
<laughs> like, I haven't seen any of this, but uh, I'm rooting for Victoria. <laughs> uh, like, sitting next to Chris Thomas being like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, it is worth me saying, especially for the commenters, too, that some of the people in this uh, on this panel have not seen All-Stars. Um, really just Derek. I, the lead, I mean, or Jarvis here knows, basically, like, you know, those things. But Derek has no idea. So, yes, Victoria does return to All-Stars. Um, we are not going to talk about all stars. I have questions about like kind of the in between Terrapin trials and all stars, but beyond that, we're gonna get an all stars maybe for another time. Um, but uh, we are here to have you talk about Terrapin trials, which I mean, I've obviously talked to you personally about it, but um, I didn't really do live streams back in the day for Terrapin trials, so never gotten your perspective on it. Obviously, it's like six years later, so or seven. I don't really know, so we'll see how how fresh it is. But I'm really excited to have you on. Um, what's how's the uh, quarantine and and everything that you're up to. You want to give an update on everything? Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, this was filmed freshman years. So that was 2014, six years ago. I graduated from Maryland in 2017 and I worked for almost two years, decided I wasn't really happy with where I was. Um, so I decided to go for a master's degree. So now I'm living in London. I started in August, should be finishing in June. Um, so that's also why we're doing like a weird time. I know it's like 3 p.m. ish for, for all of you. Um, it's so yeah. weird time these days. Time doesn't exist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, London's been in lockdown for probably a month and a half now. Uh, maybe not quite that long, but we're definitely going for another two ish weeks, if not longer. Yeah. Uh, have you found any survivor games in London yet? <laughs> Um, so I showed some of my classmates and they were absolutely appalled and they were like, oh, we should start this year. <laughs> but I feel like it's such a big time commitment, such a big, you know, on top of everything that we have to handle. Um, no, I actually met uh, a UK fan from Northern Ireland, Rory. He came down to London we actually met up in person, so that was kind of cool. But I haven't played any games or done anything online, but I hopefully eventually will. I'm sure watching this back today really made you want to get back in the swing of things. And <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, well, uh, oh wait, I need to go. I remember I need to go to the, to the private chats. So, um, oh, that wasn't anything useful. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Lita's jokes are always uh, <laughs> worthwhile. I'm going to expose Lita. She, I almost said Queen of England, which would have actually been That's incredible. actually true. <laughs> That's accurate. Yeah. She's doing more with the monarchy than the queen ever did. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I have some questions to uh, to start things off, but uh, I have told the the rest of the panel that um, if they have some, they are certainly welcome to chime in and, and include those. Um, and if you have things that you're like are remembering, then please don't hesitate to say those. But I just I guess to start off, you know, um, I I didn't know you really going into Terrapin Trials. Like I think we'd met because we were like I was already on your floor, but I was on the other side of the floor. Um, and I don't even remember how exactly you heard about it, but I feel like you approached me, which is always a nice sign for me of like, oh, somebody who like actually is interested in doing it. So what do you remember about kind of coming into Survivor or Terrapin Trials or how you found out about it or what it, what you expected from it? Yeah, so um, I don't actually remember if I reached out or if you reached out, but I definitely saw season two kind of happening over the first semester of my freshman year. And I think I was like, what, what is happening? Why are all these people like running down our hallways and <laughs> screaming about like wanting to kill each other or run people out and stuff. So it definitely intrigued me. And then winter break, I think that's when I found out about it. And I thought it'd be a great way to get to know people um, and just really explore the college experience. Actually prior to playing Terrapin Charles, I had never really seen any survivors. So I think um, a lot of a lot of fans who watch me play say that I may like play like a bot or something, but I really had no sense of strategy when I started playing. And so I, I don't think I really had an idea of what I was getting myself into either. I really thought maybe it would be a good way to meet people, um, explore a new side of myself, but I really did not know what else to expect. Uh, did you find that it was a good place to meet people <laughs> and find out about it? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, overall, I think, like, especially how, how the Survivor Maryland community has grown, it's just crazy to know that um, even after Austin and Anders left the university, there are more hosts, more seasons happening. I think recently I saw that we're casting for season 15, which is crazy. I think it'd be great to have, like, a more cohesive community, meet everyone who's gone through Survivor Maryland. Um, but definitely, like, through Terrapin Trials and through All Stars and the seasons that I helped out with as well, it was a great way to definitely get to know people I don't think I would have met otherwise in college. Yeah. Um, so 
especially I mean, Terrapin Trials is a very interesting season where I wouldn't call it community building. <laughs> I don't know if that was the <laughs> community <laughs> destroying. Yeah, in some ways, honestly, yeah, it was always very funny because I was an RA and they're like, they want like programmer of the year for floor building and stuff, and I was like, no. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> um, but what was, I guess, you know, as you got into it and, and as you were going through Terrapin Trials, what what were you feeling in the moment of like, I, I guess just like what was it like overall to, to go through while you were navigating your classes and, and everything else going on in freshman year? Yeah, I think when I signed up, I had no idea like what the time commitment would be, what the mental load would be. Like every four hours a week. <laughs> no, honestly, like when I think when we when people ask, you're like, oh yeah, you know, like you have your challenges, maybe like two to three hours a week, and then you talk to people, you go to travel council, totally manageable. But um, over the course of that semester, I would have dreams about missing challenges or getting <laughs> out. My roommate, like, legitimately, I would be like in my room, like either talking to someone from from the season or talking to to the like, camera, and my my roommate would be in the corner, like, what is happening? Like, I don't know what I signed up for. My roommate is crazy. Um, so I just think that like really the 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 way that it like really sucks you in. Um, it was overall a really great experience, and I could not have expected what I gained out of it. But definitely when I when I went in, if I'd known that it would have been like such a big mental and, and time load, I don't know if I really would have signed up. <laughs> cool. Thank God that you did. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Very um, this is a good question to to bring up. Um, is is what is the the biggest college aspect that you think comes into play with this version of Survivor? Yeah, um, I think Lita mentioned on one of the previous episodes, but I think like the relationships in in college like matter a lot more. So um, on on the island, like sometimes you have people who know each other from you know returner seasons, but generally it's all all new newbies and people have no prior relationships so you don't have any preconceived notions whereas in my first season um we knew each other because a lot of us lived in the same floor we had we were in the part of the same program and then of course for all stars we all kind of had a sense of how other people performed in their first season um and then i also think that like the the relationship building aspect like a lot of people would go out to the bars and just get drunk, you know, and that's not something you can really have on the island. But that's also a way that people really bond and that also affects how they end up voting in the game. Yeah. Yeah, bars don't exist on Survivor. I'm kind of interested to know, like, if you felt like Terry, like your vote for Terry was like really a vote for Terry, if you felt good about him winning, or if it was really more just a vote against Faluke, like you yeah. would have been um, voted against her no matter what. Yeah, that's a really good question. I think I watched back the the finale for the first time in a really long time. I think I like seen some some clips since it aired, like just just we watch whatever. Um, but watching the full thing back, I think I like realized a lot of things that like what I could have done better personally. And also I could tell that at the very end in that last year, um, the last rebel council, I was definitely a lot more bitter than maybe I'd let myself believe myself to be, you know? Um, so I think at, in the moment, I I, um, I definitely probably was more of a vote against Luke a, And that was stemming from the hurt that I felt, um, the way that our relationship kind of fell apart in the last season or the last episode, sorry. Um, I think if it were purely based on performance, I did get a really good sense into both their gameplays. And I think that Terry was, um, like a lot of people on the jury really didn't see how he played at all. And I was one of the few players who interacted the most with him throughout the course of the season. So I definitely saw where he, you know, where he was strong and where he performed well. But I think if it was purely based on performance, then I would have voted for Fulige. I think it's worth noting too, from my memory of it, Final Tribal was very, very soon at, like we really condensed those last few rounds of the game. And so if we could even mention, like we had a tribal challenge tribal, I think in the span of like 24 hours or something with that final six to final five. So that was crazy. Then maybe we had a bit of a break, but like final three all the way to the end was maybe in like two or three days. And that's a lot to handle in that amount of time um, with everything else going on. And so, yeah, I certainly, I think that you, you can't like, I, I've never seen you like that in terms of like kind of I could feel sort of like some of the like 
hurt and like anger within you um, from that that night. And I think it's it's not something I'm used to seeing from you. So you could you definitely did kind of come through. Um, the can you talk about like your relationship with with Terry in general too? Because you yeah, I think you probably were like him and Zach were the closest strategically, but I feel like you were the closest with him personally. Um, yeah. So actually, um, kind of funny anecdote that never really got shown on the season. The the fraternity that Terry was rushing was a prof- professional frat, and I went out to some events as well. So I think we had the Terrapin Trials kickoff where we did steal the bacon, and then a couple days later, I saw him at like a rush event, and so we were like, oh hey, like we should talk, get to know each other. So it was kind of because of that uh, that we saw each other. Um, that probably really got us to to bond initially, and then I actually. Am I sorry? This is my internet. Oh, it, it looks for a sec, but you're good. Okay, cool. Um, I like went to lunch with him and his girlfriend a couple times. So we definitely like bonded a lot as friends outside of just the just the game. And I think um like uh, Terry's just like a really cool guy. He was just so busy, I think, with his pledging and he kept on talking about it, of course, which got really annoying. Um but I think because I knew him so well, that's also why I felt like um, he was someone I was comfortable working with throughout the course of the game. I think a lot of the the relationships that I built with him earlier on were what really helps throughout the course. So like in the beginning, we were in Hukutana together, and then we swapped tribes um, with Zach. And so I think the three of us being on the same tribe that helps us keep um, keep our little group cohesive. And then after the after the merge and stuff, like no one really quite realized how close we were until it got much deeper into the game. Um, so that was something that helps my gameplay from the start. Nice. Yeah, that's why you're both in suits that first time you meet is because you're at the rush of it, I think. Yeah, exactly, exactly. We like walk to his very far away uh, room. Yeah, I was going to ask, <laughs> you had the question of the season, which how much of a disadvantage is it to be in Denton versus La Plata? Like literally not at all. It was maybe a four or five minute walk max. <laughs> you have to walk like towards La Plata to go to the dining hall anyway. So I don't know, like you never eat. <laughs> but the <laughs> elements yeah. are such a factor. Yeah, like squirrels. <laughs> Did you watch the Guts and Glory preview, Lita? Yeah, I the well, blizzard, conditions. It, it's gonna be harsh conditions. They have to blizzard. sleep outside in a in a Maryland frat backyard. I can't even imagine the torture. <laughs> and they have to listen to dubstep remixes of when you close your eyes while they're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> what? Pompeii or something? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, they get to uh, experience the worst night of my life, certainly, um, <laughs> that four of the people on this panel got to enjoy. Yes. Um, the, oh, that's, well, Queen of Social. That's a great This is the question of, do you think you would have won if you made it to the end against either Terry or Faluke? And then we can choose to talk about kind of the end game. Yeah, I think throughout the course of the game, I had various feelings about that. I think that there was a point where I felt like I could have won against both of them. I think going towards the very end, I was pretty confident that I could win against Terry just because of the perception that the jury had that he was literally never there. And I was probably one of the few who could actually really articulate his gameplay well for him to the jury. Um, Against Fluke, I think it really kind of depended. I think we did a lot of things together in tandem, especially throughout the course of the beginning to middle. So it was more about how I could articulate the plays that I did differently, where I was really stepping up and taking taking decisions in my own hands and how that, um, you know, if I'm going, going against Fluke, like how that really propelled my momentum towards the end. I think there was a point where yeah, like I, I thought that maybe I would be comfortable going against Luke, but you could see that by the last episode, you know, I didn't really want to take that risk, which is why I really wanted to take Terry. Um, I, I think like it would have really been a toss up. Who knows what would have happened? Mm-hmm. The, um, what do you think, uh, having, I mean, I know in the moment that jury is a, a whole m- a range of things, but the idea of a jury at Maryland and especially with Terrapin trials where like a lot of the jury wasn't present for tribals. And even if they were, you know, I don't know how much you actually learned from that, but you guys also like the jury wasn't really talking a lot mm-hmm. about what they had experienced. Like I had them in a group chat, but I just don't remember there being a lot of chatter. So <laughs> did you have an, like, had you thought about what you would say if you got to the end or do you have thoughts on kind of how you would have felt like you could have played the jury if you had gotten there? Yeah. So 
I think one aspect that um, you definitely can't tell through the episode editing is that like the, the jury was really not present, right? And it was kind of, you could kind of hear through the grapevine, like some people had established perceptions of certain people in the game. And I think one thing that people saw me as was like, I was originally like very nice. Um, I think Harry said like, oh, I don't want to vote her out. She's like a nice person here. And then when we voted out Katie, immediately like flipped on that. So I think um, people were generally very surprised when I made very big moves. So when I voted out Holly um, later, later in the game and stuff. So I think it was more of me like kind of pitching like you know like even though this isn't something you expected i think these were really good strategic plays and i think one big thing that i felt was that the jury was negatively um kind of biased against me because they they thought that i was one type of person and then didn't expect me to make maybe like these very snaky moves or whatever well, we certainly um, saw that with harry when he no, was absolutely. the nicest person ever to you're the worst person who ever lived yeah, i can't <laughs> believe um no i think, I think because we we kind of heard that, that also really like affected why I thought um, had I gone with Luke, like potentially I had a chance. Because like with Zach, we also heard that all of the all of the people on the jury, like oh my god, Zach's like such a pro. He's so fun to play with. Like even if he didn't vote with me, like I totally get it. Whereas I felt like for for me and for Luke, and to some extent for Terry, like they didn't have that positive perception at all. Um, so that definitely like affected how I was gonna pitch myself had I had the chance to go to that final two. Um, let's let's talk about the the your relationship with Fluke. I think it's worth it's worth getting into and the kind of final three element of it. So you guys knew each other coming in to at least some extent, right? And I, that definitely grew early in the season. Is that right to characterize it? Yeah, definitely. So we lived on the same floor. Um, the, the floor was divided by gender, obviously. So, you know, girls floor. And then we were... One of the, um, there were like maybe six or seven freshmen who lived on our floor and everyone else was a sophomore. So immediately from the beginning, I think it was like quite easy to say that we all gravitated to each other. And then we were also part of the same program, which is why we also live so close together. Um, so like see each other in classes, seeing each other on the floor all the time. We definitely got pretty close. And I think that... Um, I don't really remember at the beginning of the season, like how close we were at that point like from from you know just interacting over the course of the first semester but like we definitely had like positive perceptions of each yeah. other right we were oh really yeah tim tough. i'll throw in here tim asked was your fr friendship with fluke genuine or was it mostly for the game i didn't get a sense that you didn't really care for in your confessional i you could all you could give your perspective yeah um i think it's it's really hard to like kind of remember back now i think just because there's been so much that's tainted maybe the the memory but i definitely think that like my friendship with her was genuine um there were just i perhaps maybe didn't see myself as close with her then i think like later mentioned something that like um what she was saying about like things happening on the floor there were so many other other elements that now i looking back like realized why um like we both reacted so negatively to like the things that were happening right um but i maybe didn't see myself as as close with her at the beginning which is why there might have been some some moments in my confessionals where it seemed more like i was just taking the opportunity of like utilizing that friendship but i definitely thought you know i was definitely close with her um w which is why i think also by the end when um there were things that were more personal that were brought into the game that i didn't feel like needed to be discussed on camera um i was really negatively affected by that yeah, I mean, my sense was always that you guys were actually close and um, maybe at times there was an imbalance in it. But I, I thought that when you were speaking about your reservations about her, it was more about that you were worried as to how that could affect the game and you were standing in it like, oh, she might go say something to someone or like some might rub people the wrong way. And I wasn't taking that as her rubbing you the wrong way as much as that you were worried about the game perspective versus your friendship. But kind yeah. of going towards the end, as you talked about, I mean, um, what, were there any cracks in it before, like, I don't know, I guess, can you talk through kind of some of those underlying things and like, it, it seemed to us like it really started to fracture after the Holly vote, but maybe that wasn't necessarily true. Yeah, um, so I, I definitely can't like really speak to how she was feeling through the whole experience, but I think like at the beginning, there was a pretty tight knit group of, of us freshman girls on our floor. And then um, just like roommate dynamics, like a lot of things started happening where 
personality may be different. Like the, we, we realize that maybe like, you know, um, it, it's harder to face these conflicts when we're all living in such tight spaces. Um, and so I think that there was a point when maybe Fluke felt more distant from everyone else. Um, and so I think the, the part where, um, when, when her roommate told me that she had left, but she told Holly that she had an idol. Um, I think, I think like, I'm pretty sure I didn't ask her for that information. It was just more that she had personally felt that it was something that I should know. Um, and so she, she like pulled me aside and told me it. Um, so I, so I think that the fact that it seemed like in that situation, the roommate had kind of taken my side over Fuluke's, I, I'm sure that kind of seemed like a personal um, you know, something that really affected her personally and like everything else that was happening. Um, I think primarily it was just the tensions of, of, you know, like friends, like people meeting like freshman year of college, becoming friends and then realizing that maybe, you know, personality wise or for other reasons, like, you know, you're not as compatible as you initially thought. The having watched it back now and having kind of years to reflect on it, I know as we've talked about it, I think over time, like, the perspective now versus in the moment is very different. How, how has your perspective stayed the same or changed about what went down, especially at the final three or like how it was handled and uh, has that changed at all? Yeah. Um, so I think there's definitely, uh, there are a lot of places where I could have been like better in that situation to handle it. Um, I think I was, it was really hard for me to, list, to step into her shoes and empathize with her, with her perspective. And I think having, had the time and, and the space to think about it. It's allowed me to kind of see where she was coming from. I think the biggest thing for me um, and the biggest ri reason why I was really frustrated is because I I think between, um, around when Marissa was getting voted out, I think I tried to approach her because I could feel that there was already some tension and I wanted to talk about things off camera. And when, when I approached her off camera, it seemed like she wasn't very willing to talk about it. Um, so I think, at that moment, it was really frustrating that as soon as you know we were at a challenge, the cameras were on. She was she she just started to say these things that kind of felt like she was just trying to provoke me to to make me um, you know quit the challenge and and so that so that she could win. Whereas I I, th I saw it as a you know like if there's actually an issue a problem here, like I'd rather discuss it and discuss it in the context of like we're not actually playing survivor. Like let's just talk about what's happening. Mm -hmm. And so I think in, in that regard, like, um, that still does uh, bother me a little bit to this day. But, um, you know, I think, like, like we said, like we were freshmen in college, we were 18. I, I, this is definitely something that I still struggle with, to be honest. Like, I'm very much someone who likes to put a little bit of distance to think about things before I can really, like, react and really um, know how I want to, how I want to respond to something. So the fact that, like, also we were in that situation where we were forced to be, next to each other on that sundial i really wanted to win wanted to win there's no way for me to really like remove myself from that in a way that i wanted to yeah and leading into that I, we didn't talk much about this in the earlier part of the podcast but um you know eventually you did step down from the sundial and you said in the moment that you had to go to the bathroom but then you had a confessional later that said i didn't really have to i just kind of need to get out of there um yeah. Can you talk through what you were go going through there? And also, I mean, your kind of feelings at the final three. And there's a question about this in the in the chat um, too about um, like, did, kind of like, were you giving up in that kind of final three moment and, and why were you necessarily doing that? What was the kind of feeling you were going through then? Yeah, um, so I think the, like Austin said, there was so much footage. There was so much footage even from that that challenge. There was like a lot of, discussion that was happening that wasn't actually shown in the episode so from what I remember like we kept on kind of trying to hash out the discussion and it wasn't really I felt like my my opinion um wasn't really getting heard when we were on that sundial and so I think there was a point where in my head I was like you know what like it's really not worth it for me to stay here and and continue my position like I want to win a game but like at the same time, it's really not worth it for me to be putting myself a bit willingly in the situation where I'm really uncomfortable. I feel like I'm not being heard. And so I think that's ultimately why I decided, you know, like if I really needed to, if I really, really wanted to, I absolutely could have stayed there. I think, I think like that's one of my biggest strengths, like my willpower and the fact that I really, when I set myself to do something, I will get it done. 
Um, but I think, yeah, like I, I really needed to put myself out of that situation. And then what was the second part of the question? I kind of- Well, so like then at the final three, I have a memory of this, but in terms of like, uh, you kind of, I think that night, there, there, if you remember, I think you, we had a conversation in my room where yeah. like we had to sit down face to no. face. No. No. <laughs> I remember this conversation you had in <laughs> Basically, you were sitting there and. Um, okay, let's come let's let's back. But I, I think. So but, there was a time when um, I really wasn't sure if I wanted to stay. In the but game. you like wanted to quit. Okay. Yeah, exactly. There is. <laughs> um, I, I was really oh, okay. okay. We're back. <laughs> My question go through. I have no idea. Blanks, though. I, I know we were loaded too. So I did want. I, I wanted to quit after that challenge, and I talked to Austin. Austin wasn't there um, in the last probably like hour and a half or something. Um, so like I, I don't know like how quickly you found out about how things had happened at, at the challenge. But I went to his room, I like talked to him, I actually ended up like crying on camera and he came and like sat down next to me and <laughs> was like being like a therapist. And he was like talking, you're we like, you know, like how are you feeling? Like are you really sure that quitting is the right decision? So I think like through that conversation we decided like I he helped me decide that like I should still stay the game. But I think that's also like what really affected my mindset going into that last tribal council because um, I was very much like, I think you should keep your promise to Terry and take him. I want to get voted out. And I think like Felipe said, like, oh, like I should just keep Victoria to, to piss her off. Because like at that moment, I really did not want to be in the game anymore just because of how person would become and how I felt like um, the degree that it had gone to was not needed um, and not a perception that I wanted people to see me as playing this game. Yeah. Well, and and I feel like you also didn't really want to relive that at Final Tribal and just to have it be you and Faluke going back and forth that and airing the kind of laundry about it at, at Final Tribal too. Yeah. I guess my perspective, you would voice a lot to me that you, in that moment too, that you felt like everyone hated you on the jury and that you didn't have anyone that liked you from this game. And so I think one of my perspectives was like, well, you know, if you do end up getting voted out, maybe that provides closure for you and for them um, to see that you're not that you're just like them in a way. Um, and I feel like you talked about that a little bit in your last words. So I had, I had a question about that too, was did anyone reach out to you to get coffee? You know, I don't think anyone did, but I, <laughs> <laughs> but also I, I, will, I will say like the, the finale did not come out until we started filming All Stars. The day before. So no one would have wow. seen actually that I offered <laughs> to get coffee with people. Um, but no, between, between like Tariff and Trials and filming All Stars, there were a lot of people that I didn't get to know better Maybe not because of going to coffee or whatever, but like people who who played All Stars, I think we had generally better relationships with. And um, no, I think I think that like a lot of people were still involved in the Survivor Maryland community. Um, I'm definitely close with, even if they didn't really like me at that point. <laughs> Victoria, have you seen much Survivor since you did Terrapin Trials? Yeah, when I was uh, playing Turpin Trials, that was when Kagayan was airing, I think. So I was watching Sam's that. First, Sam's yeah. first season. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it was an interesting season to like start with. I haven't really watched too many older seasons, and I've kind of, kind of fallen off. So I think I watched like maybe five, six ish seasons after, and then I, I definitely like plan on catching up at some point. Just well, then. I was asking because um, in the second season, uh, which obviously was a really long time ago, but uh, in the Australian Outback, there was this really notorious villain named Jerry Manthe, and she's my favorite Survivor player ever, but everybody hated her so much, and then her last words are, uh, I hope we can all grab a beer and laugh about this mm -hmm. after, and it was just... Uh, a great homage because she, like you, was a very nice person in real life who just the game kind of warped people's perceptions of her and everybody was was very angry at her, a lot more than they were at you. Um, but it was funny because your last words kind of paralleled that of like the original Survivor villain. Got it. <laughs> Victoria, I wanted to know, maybe you can't because these I'm asking you about other people, but I wanted to know if you can speak to the perspectives of the other jurors and like going into the final travel council, because something that's always like stuck out to me in this season is that 
according to the jurors, like Fluke went into the night with their votes. And that's just something that's like been like pressed on my mind since the moment, like the very final, the first time I watched this episode. And it's like, it still is like unbelievable to me because in most seasons of Survivor, people talk about they go into Final Travel Council and absolutely nothing changes. But like to hear these guys talk, they say that they went in wanting to vote for her and then ended up not. Yeah. Um, so I, from what I remember when I was added to the jury chat, like there was absolutely like no acknowledgement of me being added. There was no discussion between me getting voted out final three to final tribal council until Austin was like, Hey guys, these are like the details you have to be there. So there was <laughs> not a lot of talk from what I remember, but I think before final tribal council, um, a lot of us got there early and I think they might've watched some clips from the final three uh, tribal council, which probably wasn't like the best I guess like the best image to have if you like already had some preconceived bias. And I definitely think that like what I think what Lita is saying earlier about like some of them definitely being biased. I think just generally throughout the course of the game, you could tell that um, like the the personalities, uh, especially among like some of the guys, I think maybe maybe they felt like they were gonna go into to vote for Fluke, but like I, I'm not really sure how true that maybe was mm -hmm. um, just based on like, some of the comments that they made or you know like some of the things that they said but i think also like having seen the final three tribal council where it was already a lot very tense and then going directly to final tribal and seeing seeing all of that probably didn't really help the situation my memory of it is that everybody met and i think i did encourage everyone to meet early because they hadn't talked at all so like it'd be worth talking to have some perspectives going in instead of it all being on the speeches um but uh I think you you being the last juror too, everyone was like, well, what happened? And you were like, a lot of this stuff happened. And I remember people being like, well, then can we see that? Like we wanted, I was going to package all the tribals into video, but it just mm -hmm. be a lot to upload and technology was worse back then. But we had the clips from then. And I feel like we, I feel like we watched that one and maybe final four too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Cause they were like, well, we wanted to see, we couldn't be there, but we wanted to see them. So, um, but the I, I will say I see I see in the chat too like the jury attending tribal thing was very different and it's part of it is because of the whole scheduling nightmare that it was with Terry all the time but we literally just could not get the season done by trying to have the jury be there for it so we had to focus on the rest of them. Um, I really wanted to see Victoria's gorgeous dress in that final tribal like the final three like I can't blame them. <laughs> the um the. Uh, I was going to say that, and I don't know, this is without getting into All-Stars at all or anything, like, did did anyone, I was very interesting that, that fina the finale got posted the day before All-Stars started. Did people from All-Stars talk to you about, like, watching that, and, like, did they have things to say about watching you back in that season? And seeing yeah, yeah, yeah. I, if I remember correctly, I think it was posted the day of All-Stars. So we, like, did the All-Stars filming, and it was posted that evening. Oh, was it? I yeah, I'm pretty no, sure. Yeah, maybe I recorded the other thing the night before. That makes <laughs> yeah, maybe. Because I'm pretty sure I watched it after. I was like, oh, this is not going to be a good look. Um, <laughs> but no, I think there were definitely some people who reached out to me after um, because they just like didn't realize how how it had really gone down. Um, I think Holly was one of them. And then um, maybe some other people from our season. I don't really remember. And then also some, some from previous seasons who were helping out and stuff. But you know, it was like also, you know. Nice to see that. <laughs> um, I have more questions, but I will wait on mine. And uh, there's some great ones in the chat, so I'll start to pull through. But panel, if you have a few you want to put up there, go for it. Uh, this one's kind of like jumping back a little bit. Like my, I think probably my favorite like part of the season was that final six where you like were caught in this position where um, like you needed Holly to be gone because she was closer to Fluke than Fluke was to you, but you also didn't want them to know that you were part of that. Like, can you just speak to like that decision to kind of like show your hand a little and like they kind of forced you to vote out Holly like by writing her name down instead of like trying to play double agent? Like, what was that whole situation like? Yeah. So I think when I was pulled into the like final four girls lines, I was like, you know, I was a fan of it, but I also felt that my relationship with Holly and even with Marissa to some extent wasn't that close. Whereas I built a relationship with Terry and Zach throughout the course of the season to to the point that I felt like they could trust me 
a little bit at that point. So um, initially, I think we were only planning on having the girls vote for vote for Zach. And so I thought, this is great. Like, I can just let Zach vote his idol and I'll pretend I had no idea whatsoever. Um, but then, like, a lot of things happened right before tribal. So I think it was like 10 or 15 minutes before tribal, we met up, Holly, Faluke, and I met up in, in one of their rooms. And Holly was just like freaking out. She she was like, you know, I think something's gonna go completely wrong. We have to split the vote. And she was very, very adamant about it. And so I think like I tried to talk her out of it. I was like, you know, like I think we should be like show solidarity, whatever. Like, <laughs> Um, but it just, it just didn't happen, and I could tell that she was not willing to do that. So then, when it came down to it, I knew that if it was two two two, um, the the girls would end up voting out Zach, or sorry, voting out. Um, wait, which way was it? Yeah, it yeah. Was Terry, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Voting out Terry, Zach would have played his idol, um, and I didn't really want that because I had a relationship with Terry, and my relationship with Terry was definitely stronger than my relationship with Holly, which is why I decided, you know what, like, even though this might be too early, um, I really need to do this to make sure that my relationships are still strong generally after this vote. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah, I just, that was an amazing episode and moment. I How much do you remember about Holly saying, cool, Victoria? <laughs> Yeah. You know, I didn't realize that I smirked after she said that. I did not mean to do that. But like I, I I knew she would probably know that it was me, so I was not looking forward to her reaction. So. No, she just thought you were cool and I agree with her. <laughs> Especially with your idol hunting sunglasses. Yes. So Should have worn those at tribal like Marissa. Looks. Yes, Victoria wasn't the look queen. I'll say it. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, I, Jack will kill me if I don't bring this up. So how does it feel to play with the best survivor player of all time, Marissa? Um, so Marissa and I didn't actually have like one-on-one -on -one talks that much, but she was such a sweet girl. And I like honestly wish that she's one of the people that I would have wanted to get to know more. You can still invite her for coffee when you're next time you're back to the States. That's true. Is she still in the DC area? I'm like not sure yep. about it. Yeah, we still have to find out if she works in the same building as Lita. I, I think that we work on the same floor. <laughs> oh, wow. oh, my God. <laughs> but unconfirmed because Austin keeps forgetting to ask her. Right. <laughs> I promise I will. Um, You're going to have to post that picture to Twitter just for Jack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That would actually be a great picture. Audience <laughs> of one. <laughs> uh, Marissa won the won her first round battle. So yeah. Yeah. she's like, is she going to become like that thing on Survivor Reddit where every time a survivor does an interview, everyone always asks, <laughs> uh, what is, how do you feel about Amanda Kimmel? Like, is Marissa <laughs> going to be that for Survivor Maryland? I mean, Jack will probably make it that way. So, yeah. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> yes, that um, the uh, this is I thought was an interesting question from Tim again. Uh, do you consider yourself an introvert, and do you normally befriend extroverts? Um, I would definitely consider myself an introvert in that I need space to myself to kind of like recharge. I don't really think that like I'm. I, I'm not sure what you mean, but like, I think there's like a perception that introverts maybe are like kind of shy and not really outgoing, whatever. Um, I'm pretty friendly, but I think one thing about me is that my, I have like a pretty high guard generally. So it's kind of hard to get past the superficial and really get to know me. It takes time for that. Um, so, so in that regard, like I definitely think I'm an introvert. Um, normally befriending extroverts, I think it kind of depends, um, depends on the situation, depends on the person as well. So it varies. Like, I think I have some friends who are very similar to me and then other friends who are very different, but I can generally get along well with those. Nice. But what's your sign is the real question. That's the more scientific. <laughs> sign? Yeah. Take a guess. Uh, okay. I want to hope you're a Virgo with me, but I don't know. No, I'm a Pisces. I was oh, oh, damn, damn victory. <laughs> damn, you're a Pisces too? Yeah. Yeah, I win for the gays. <laughs> nice. Um, this really is the one that we were talking about, uh, and Elena asked it as well. Can you talk about when you guys were splitting the vote and you voted for Eric? Um, was it intentional or was it a mistake? Do you remember this? No. Which it, one when Eric got voted out, it was like a 3 3 split. And you put your vote on to Eric, so it ended up being 4-2. Oh. You were like, oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Um, no, actually, that was 
completely a mistake. I forgot who I was supposed to be voting for, so it could have turned out really badly if Eric did have an idol. But I think um, something happened either like right before or or he said something at tribal that just really made me angry. So in the moment, I knew we wanted Eric to go out, right? And I just forgot that I was not supposed to vote for him. But yeah, um, no, like, that was not strategic on my end. All right, mystery solved. <laughs> Um, okay. How long did Holly stay upset with you after you flipped on the alliance? <laughs> to this uh, day? <laughs> um, like Holly and I, I'd say like within that four, we're not super tight. Like we only really had conversations when Fluke was there. So it was always like a group of three. So I think like outwardly Holly, I think Holly got over it by like after, by like tribal council or the final tribal council, sorry, or like, shortly after that, but like in, inwardly, I'm not sure how long it took for her to fully get over it. Um, but I think like, it was more that she wasn't really expecting it so much, I think, because like with with me, like if we don't really talk that much, like you definitely think that I, like the fact that we always had conversations with Fluke in the room, I think she just saw me as someone who would follow whatever Fluke would do. So I think that also was the biggest shock that I was willing to go up against that and kind of break down what she thought was a, pretty close relationship within three of us. Yeah, I don't know about the outwardly. I, maybe I'm reading into this, but in the final four, Holly, Holly was helping out with the challenge, and I felt like she handed you the whiteboard very, uh, she was really looking. She didn't look thrilled. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think Victoria is doing fine anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> My life is fine. <laughs> if you could change one thing from your game, what would, from Terrible Trials, what would it be? Nothing is an acceptable answer, but I don't think that's what you're going to say. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is like what I was said, managing relationships. So like there were people that I didn't really have that many conversations with at all. And that's something I could have done better just to just to have people get to know me more as a person. Right. And then also managing relationships in the sense that like I could have made the moves that I did and then still gone back to those people that I hurt and said, hey, like I want to talk it out. And I think that like had I like maybe I did try to do it, but it wasn't as effective. And I think that like that aspect is definitely something that I'm generally weaker on. So um, putting in more work and making sure that people are more comfortable with where I'm coming from, even if they don't agree with me, is something that I could have done better. Um, the only game question I still had was uh, the final five vote, if you remember, it was very chaotic. Um, we were trying to break it down last episode, but even this episode, the first. <laughs> scene of Zach talking about it was new information to me that I had totally forgotten. So um, do you remember what that was like? And and you kind of went and told Fluke the actual plan. Were you feeling better about going with Fluke and Marissa at that point versus Zach and Terry? Yeah, I think what happened was um, we had the final six tribal council. Holly was voted out. And immediately after we went into the final five challenge. And so I like based on the reaction at that last final tribal council at the final six tribal council, I think I like blurted out that uh, Fluke had the idol to Zach and Terry. I'm not sure if I really would have done that if I had a lot of time to think about it, but I think it was like kind of an, a reaction to how, um, like how Fluke and Marissa reacted about it that I wasn't fully expecting. And so that kind of just accelerated right into the challenge, right? And then after the challenge, after I had some time to think about it, I, I realized that, you know what, like that was probably not the best decision on my part to tell the boys because that was something that they were not expecting at all. And that's why I went back to Fluke and wanted to work with her to really like get the momentum back on the girl's side. I think in a way it was also to leave my options open because had it gone down where she played the vo uh, played the idol for Marissa and they voted for Terry, like Terry and Zach wouldn't have fully realized the the role that I played, right? And giving that information to the girls. Um, but I think what ended up happening was I, I did tell Faluke to play the idol for Marissa. Um, I think to, to, to some extent she like did believe that I was telling her the truth, but then in the last five minutes when Zach went in and, and told her the information, um, I think she was just like so confused, which is why she thought she was being targeted. And then um, I, at the final five tribal council, I was not expecting it at all. So you can see like the, the shock on my face when she plays her idol and she says she's playing it for herself. I think I like even asked like, wait, is she, she's saving herself. She's not saving Marissa because I like- <laughs> Are you sure you didn't get that wrong, Austin? <laughs> right, exactly. I, I like really couldn't wrap my head around it. 
And I think that's also when I realized that Zach is actually a really big strategic threat because all the time he would be like, you know, like going around like, ha, ah, this is so funny. Like I have an idol, whatever. Um, but when he was able to manipulate someone like that in such a last minute, and when I realized that like I could have gone home because of him, like that also was what put Zach on my radar and made me want to get him out next. Um, panel? Uh, yeah. Maybe you should pan gay rights, absolutely. Oh no. <laughs> what? What's just happening? just possessing me by making me say gay rights. I don't understand what's happening. Lita, your mic there. Whoa, what, you plugged in? What happened? Oh god. It's like very, very, very staticky. <laughs> <laughs> yes, General Grievous has joined the chat. Um, oh my gosh. We, uh, Victoria, what's your Hogwarts house? Slytherin. Yep. Oh, yes. <laughs> Tell me that's a surprise. Right. <laughs> um, can you still sleep for over 12 hours in a day? <laughs> oh my God. I've been sleeping so much during lockdown. It's been terrible, especially over the weekends. I think yesterday I, well, my sleep schedule's already been a mess because like some, some of my classmates went back to their home countries, whereas I think only like 20% of us stayed here in London. So to talk to some of my friends, I've been up until like two or three and then I'll wake up at like six in the morning and then stay up until noon and then sleep again. So yeah, I can sleep for more than 12 hours still. Nice. That's, you know what? Never lose that. <laughs> um, the uh, Lita, can you can we test? I'm scared. Hey. <laughs> yeah. I literally just unplugged all of my equipment, my headphones, <laughs> my microphone. I don't know what it was, but uh, fix now. I'm yeah. gonna it out for you. It was very scary. I. <laughs> I was like, nothing is working, so I'm unplugging everything. Uh, Victoria, who did you enjoy playing more with in Survivor Island Reunion, Scally or Lita? <laughs> well, um, spoiler alert, I got voted out first during the reunion. <laughs> so, what the hell? Yeah, we didn't Derek have to at all. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> My friendship with Lita and Brian is over. What the we hell? Were we were out. Out. <laughs> we all yeah, 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 okay, okay. No, what, what happened was like, you know, we had our very first challenge and then we had to scatter. We only had like five minutes and no one wanted to do anything. So we stood around for like three minutes and then the last two minutes he will start whispering. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> Well, if yeah. I ever play a game of Survivor with you, Victoria, I am going to be like Faluke, and you are getting to that final two, and I am taking <laughs> over to over you. Right. Gal and I were on the other <laughs> side. I just want to be very I'm not blaming you. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Gal and Lita, were we all in the same starting tribe? Yes. Yeah. I don't remember that. <laughs> wow. We voted out Phil. Yeah, I remember yeah. we voted Phil. Mm. Yeah, no, we were. Don't remember, you and I were in a pretty tight alliance. <laughs> we were strategizing in the kitchen while everyone I was just, around. Of you were there there when I got voted out because we all made the merge and then split, got split up and went into two separate tribal councils, and I got oh. separated from my alliance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's when Micah you. tried to blindside me. Bad move, Micah. Yeah, Bad Micah move. and I were voted out at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> um, Wait, this is this is like bringing me to a question we got earlier in the chat, and it's uh, can I make it on the screen? No, but uh, it seems like uh, people were asking about your threat level going into the All Stars season, and while we might aren't gonna spoil what happens in Survivor Maryland All Stars, like if your season had just aired and the this episode just aired right as the game was starting, like can you speak to what you thought people were thinking of you at the time, and if you were perceived as a large threat based on this? Yeah, I think just because of immediacy, I got the sense that people thought I was a big threat. Um, okay, sorry, I was reading the question. <laughs> I just thought they could say best. Yeah, I, I, like also Austin sent out a, a little clip before All Stars happened of his like top five favorite moments. And one of them was the, mm. the and so like, it was not a great way to like set myself up for some people who didn't really know me. I think primarily um, I knew everyone from season four because I helped out to some extent, but there were definitely some people from season two. So going in with some notoriety, notoriety, oh, I'm kidding. <laughs> a little. Notoriety. Wake up, Jeffrey. There you go. There you go. Thank you. 
<laughs> cannot speak English. Um, yeah, I, I think that also may have affected how I played, but I don't really want to talk about Alzheimer's. No, no spoilers. Okay. Um, but how did I feel going in, I guess? Like, yeah, I, I was really excited to have the second opportunity. I think I was initially kind of on the fence because of how I knew that my first season ended, but like talking to Austin and thinking about it, I really wanted the chance to redeem myself and kind of see what I'm capable of without having a really tight relationship at the very beginning. Wow, did you just recite the opening confessional? You have an all-star second. Totally the same thing. Well done. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, I have it word for word typed out in the corners. <laughs> <laughs> really, really see what <laughs> the absolute best parts of Guts and Glory is when you see Victoria holding an iPhone in the background. <laughs> I'm so excited now to watch that. It's pretty present. <laughs> yeah, we need you and uh, Chris Lacombe to uh, work in those all or those Guts and Glory cameras. <laughs> yeah, yeah, calculated moves. Yeah. Didn't realize, I, I guess I didn't know Chris Lecombe that well when I was playing my season, but wa watching back, I'd see him in, in the screen. I'm like, oh wow, like I didn't know he was around this much. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he yeah. looks really different. I can't identify yeah. him. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Like, the <laughs> short hair and he's not, yeah. I laughed pretty like, hard at him. Teams, I can't recognize him. <laughs> I laughed hard at him going to chase down the guy who was, <laughs> I don't know if anyone noticed at the end of the guy who came in and like interrupted Final Tribal, you see Chris Lecomte to go just start walking behind him at the end. Really? <laughs> he like went to know, so. And that also, guy's dead now. <laughs> <laughs> that, guy, that guy was getting filmed. What is the spinoff show that was going on? Like the Survivor Maryland behind the scenes. TMZ, I don't know. Is DMZ D Wang involved at all? So what? Is D Wang involved at all? You know. <laughs> Zach's iconic roommate. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, Victoria, rank um, the roommates. Uh, Mimi, Tristan, and D-Wang. Okay. Um, so I'd say Mimi first, for obvious reasons. <laughs> um, and then I'd actually rank Tristan second because he was just always a great character. I don't, I don't think I knew D-Wang that well. <laughs> the what? Chandler? No. Chandler was no, he wasn't roommates then, but um Who did D Wang live with that year? Zach, right? Zach. I thought Zach he was, was building, I don't no, know. No, Zach, Zach was with Tristan. Yeah, Z Wang yeah, was across was the hall. Oh. Yeah. 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 Wow. <laughs> Just this random name that you've heard. Um, <laughs> yeah, I guess D Wang's kind of irrelevant to the Terrapin Open Trials saga, so I'll yeah. have to Third. Except for the Zach Idol find. Yeah, yeah, he has more yeah. screen time than Mimi does. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's true. That's true. Um, Victoria, did you have a single favorite moment from Terrapin Trials of living with it, living in it? Hmm. Honestly, I mean, I think the whole thing was just such a unique experience that I, first of all, was not expecting. And then second, I think like so few people have in college that just generally it was like really fun, really fun. Like whenever I wanted to talk to someone, I just go to, go to Austin's room and be like, hey, I want to do a confession. Oh. <laughs> feel like I had a lot of friends. <laughs> awesome. Who's gonna um, have you ever tried out for the CBS version? Would you? When are we going to see you on? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I am actually not currently eligible for the CBS version. Mm -hmm. um, but I think... I would consider playing. I also don't think, though, that I'm like the typical type of person they'd cast. Um, maybe because like my personality, I, I think like I'm not the most suited for camera. Like I don't always have like punchy one one liners or whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I think like if it ever came up, I'd jump on the opportunity. I just don't know if they'd really cast me. <laughs> I feel the same way about myself, but I completely disagree about you. I think you are perfect <laughs> reality TV casting, and any casting director would jump at the opportunity. Yeah. If you and Faluke shout out for The Amazing Race, <laughs> <laughs> we would be <laughs> boring. CBS would not be able to pass. Well, that probably won't be until like at least two years from now because no one's traveling. For the next <laughs> True. The Amazing Race was on the rocks before. And now it's like. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I didn't have any other questions. Does the panel have any more? Um, I you answered my final six. I, I feel like I every know. Survivor woman needs to be asked the question: How does it feel having such a robust gay following? <laughs> <laughs> every woman needs to. Be <laughs> yeah, because Absolutely. it's a great question. You know, I didn't even realize it was that robust. <laughs> <laughs> I do, at least here, I can't point to Sam. 
<laughs> Relatively <laughs> robust. Yes. <laughs> but yeah. So I'm I'm that. That. I, I, will... ask. <laughs> I was. <laughs> Um, I actually was going to ask what what it's like to have. I mean, it, granted, we're not like talking about millions of viewers here, but what? you know, what's it like to have? <laughs> what is it like to have? Uh, you know, to be a a, a niche internet legend. No, I also was not excited at all because when I signed up to play Survivor Maryland, like was was season two even like really out? I think it was like slowly being aired, but I didn't yeah. realize at the time like how big this would get. And the fact that six years after we filmed Urban Charles, we're still talking about it, that's crazy to me. And then during um oh wait, no, I guess no spoilers, but like we had fans during All Stars like interacting, like posting things. I, I would like lurk on Twitter and I would just be shocked at like what I was <laughs> people making images photoshopped in weirdos like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like kind of a merch. <laughs> that was crazy. Um the uh yeah and you have thirty five uh you've drawn you've drawn thirty five viewers currently watching an hour forty five minutes into this. So your power <laughs> is un is un un I don't know what word I'm going for. Ill illiterate. <laughs> um, well, I don't have any more questions. I think we can run through. I did want to get at least from Lita, and everybody can chime in a couple uh, superlatives for the season one last time. But did we have any other uh, well, any other questions before I move on from that? Victoria, you were very lovely to me the couple of times we met, and I'm sorry we didn't get to play together on the, yeah, on the weekend no, version. Hopefully, hopefully, when I come back to the states, we can go hang out and do more things together. All yes. of us. <laughs> Maryland reunion too. Yeah, well, right. <laughs> um, the uh, some random quotes I had from this episode. Um, <clears throat> the I know I said in real life in the like for the elimination order in the exact order they went out, but it sounded to me like in the exact order they were outed. <laughs> <laughs> Boston <laughs> canceled. Yes, Boston canceled. Um, yeah, Varner wishes. <laughs> Oh, no. I wrote down. <laughs> I wrote oh. down. Uh, Terry can't remember the elimination order because he wasn't there for most of them. Oh, yeah. oh. The shade was knee deep. Um, I enjoyed the random couple walking through the final four challenge. That was great. I was like, "Are these important? Should we know who these people are?" <laughs> they are capital I important. <laughs> I mean, I just like. Uh, I just can't get over every time of like. The dramatic irony in this season, having like when you know the outcome of like, uh, I can't. We got to get Fluke out because uh, it's a guaranteed loss. Yeah. <laughs> go against right. her in the finals. Or every time Terry talks about getting second place. Yeah. Yeah. Over and over. Great storytelling. Um, um, I my favorite part of the or not my favorite part, but I'm like a total. I just love um, when what's it called. When pa parallels, parallels and storytelling. And so there's a point in the final three tribal where Fluke is like, Victoria, I'm voting you out. Like, w we don't even have to keep talking about it. And then at the end, at final tribal council, Victoria stands up and is able to say to her, I don't, I'm not making a decision here. I'm definitely not voting for Fluke. So it's like, it's great, like parallelism and <laughs> what's that called? Kismaticism, where it, like it switches. It's so good. Yes. <laughs> great story producing, Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nothing to do with it. <laughs> um, the uh, no, I mean, yeah. What is the word you just used? I'm just like thrown off by that. It's Kismetics. called. It's it's like it's it's like kismas. So I learned about it in English class. I have no. I don't I was remember. I to say is. this sounds very AP English, but I don't know what word you're going for. It is. <laughs> no one's impressed, Sam. I'm not trying to impress anyone. I couldn't even remember the word parallel. <laughs> well, Victoria I mean, comes on and Sam starts talking about kismaticism. I, I just googled that word, how I think it's spelled, and it's I, K I S M E T. No, oh, like kismet. No, yeah, that's it's what not I even. Thought a, of. It's not even what I'm trying to say because the, the word it's like it, it has to do with the X. I don't remember it. I don't know. <laughs> you know but I word. know it's a word. I know it's like an English term. <laughs> it's difficult. Yeah. Like that. As difficult as devastating. <laughs> devastating. <laughs> um, the well, I also like that too. The, the parallelism with the uh, fire. I did not say that right. Parallelism. With the there a fire with thousand, is happening. Fire with thousand suns is one of my favorite episodes. Yes, they use it for Thank each you, other. Chat. The what? 
Chiasmus. Yes. Oh, yeah. I'm that so I've right. When when they are repeated in reverse order, yes. Yes. Chiasmus um, is familiar, but I would never. Thank you to it. Elena W. Queen. She said earlier, "Lesbians for Victoria." We totally, it's, you know, we're in parallel. You're, you are correct, <laughs> Elena. Thank you. Victoria, how easy was the flat tire brain? <laughs> Actually, when I was rewatching today, it took me like a minute. I was like, long time. <laughs> so I guess my brain's not working either. Yeah, I liked Austin kind of breaking out of host mode into like frustrated, like, just think of what you would put in from the word tire, guys. Come on. <laughs> I was like, look at it. <laughs> I love when Austin gets angry. <laughs> you can tell instantly. Austin was very, I will turn this final tribal council around. <laughs> you don't stop Look, it, was, it was falling off the rails even more than <laughs> it should have been. I almost like instituted a conch shell. Yes. <laughs> Talking conch. Um the uh I Victoria, I liked on the on the sundial when you said I don't even go to class, so it's not a sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> I what didn't hear that season. Oh, Austin always said how playing Survivor would help you manage your time better. Um, for me, no. Like, I got my worst grades. <laughs> That's a pretty to, like, <laughs> you know, well. it too much. Not no for time. everyone. It's, it's certain people can, can do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know. Anyone else have random, uh, random things? Uh, I have another person who's canceled, but... <laughs> We can oh, get to well, we can go. Do you want to go for it? Uh, well, Alex, I think, had been put on warning, but Alex is canceled, canceled, canceled. Okay. After this episode. <laughs> Got it. Crazy bitch is not, we don't do that. <laughs> We've so talked proud. so much about, there was such a liberal use of bitch in this season. It was really wild. <laughs> it was wild times. <laughs> it was pre-Trump America. You give him a break. <laughs> yeah, we moved on to other words. <laughs> yeah, we've we've gone on to a lot worse things. Yeah. <laughs> um. The uh, I don't know if people notice this. This is, this is a little humble brag. I, this is not humble brag. I uh, <laughs> I, I I spent a lot of time editing that Sundial challenge, and that is the only time, the longest period of time I've ever used just no music. The whole thing. Ooh, ooh, yeah. What a brag. <laughs> yeah, Austin, you stop <laughs> bragging. Oh, yeah, what yeah, a little music brag. you used. All right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's go to let's go to the superlatives for the season. So we ended up with uh um who was canceled. We had Charlie, we had Harry times three, <laughs> <laughs> Alex now, and we also had uh Madeline Hauk and uh the teacher from the third grade class. <laughs> yeah. it, it was a terrible thing to say, to be honest. It's just awful. Ugh. Yeah. I'm gonna cancel Mimi for tearing apart my faves. <laughs> <laughs> Mimi did nothing wrong. Case <laughs> for me. Yeah. I think I was looking for a reality show now, so <laughs> <laughs> Her only um, crime is loving Victoria, and that's not a crime at all. <laughs> uh, do we have a um, a uh, 2013, which I now think it's 2013, if I'm looking back at the timeline. I think it was, oh, no, no, it was spring 2014. We're, yeah. We're, a 2014 moment, or or that so college moment of the season. The, the 2014 moment of the season was the Malaysian flight reference. <laughs> <laughs> because I had completely forgotten about that. <laughs> Somebody mentioned it in the challenge where you're in the dark, like looking for stuff. Somebody said, like, this yeah, is like exactly. finding the Malaysian airplane. <laughs> it's a scavenger hunt. Uh. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, that's the that's the most 2014 thing. The most that's so college, uh, I still think is Zach's poster of a naked woman in his dorm room. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, or maybe the most 2014 thing is using Pompeii by Bastille as <laughs> previous song. Pre that is dining hall music, uh, if I ever heard it. Um, yeah. <laughs> Derek, did you have a uh, uh, either of those awards? Uh, I'm still, what was the, your um, challenge clue hint that I... <laughs> oh, the, um, baby make that. <laughs> yeah, one of the challenge clue hints ended with a parenthetical that said, baby make that ass clap. <laughs> but apple censored tastefully, so you know. I don't remember this at all. <laughs> <laughs> it 
it was an iconic moment for everyone involved. So <laughs> yeah, that's my, it's both the most 2014 and most college thing that ever happened on this show. Oh, also very college, everybody losing their damn minds over Sabrina mentioning the word dildo. A dildo. Yep. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah, Victoria, I know you I know you and Sierra were friends. I don't know if you've listened to the podcast at all, but Lena and I have this caricature of Sierra now where she's just literally a nun. <laughs> oh, no, I haven't I haven't really, but I'll I'll go back and listen. Okay. <laughs> just yeah. she cannot she simply faints at the idea of anything inappropriate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, based on her comment about how Sabrina has shown how she chooses to live her life. Nice. Scally, do you only watch the finale? So I yeah, I'm gonna second everyone else's because I have not seen okay. the majority. Sam. I don't remember a 2014 moment. I I mean, I said this last time we were on, but the college moment for me is everybody eating out of the styrofoam clamshell <laughs> food stuff in their confessionals. It's so funny. It's, it's so funny. Also, I mean, I said this last time too, but it's just hilarious to look at people's dorm rooms and see how cluttered everything is and just like covered in, like just, I don't even know what it is, but there, there's something on every section of every part of every service. While Eric is eating like the world's largest <laughs> ice cream sundae out of a styrofoam <laughs> clamshell. <laughs> In reverse order, too. Right, and it's edited backwards, so he keeps getting more ice cream. Um, actually, another very college thing was uh, Eric at Final Tribal Council putting some dip in his lip oh. <laughs> on camera. <laughs> putting what? Like, uh, I forget what you referred to chewing that as. Some, like, chewing tobacco. Yeah, I haven't even noticed that, so. Is that college, or is that, like... It is in it's Illinois, like I don't know what to tell you. It is <laughs> around these parts. Oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. <laughs> and uh, he's shown how he chose him to live his life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, as the, discussed, uh, just like less, I mean, more serious, obviously, a very college thing is what we've discussed earlier. People forming relationships, figuring out that they're not the right relationships for them or just like they don't they don't they aren't as close as people might think or whatever just like all of that is very high, uh, freshman year of college and i've said this so many times but this is the sort of thing that can happen only on a college season of survivor with this level of emotional like v v volatility being freshman year college students and being forced to play this game against each other uh yeah victoria i remember i was talking to andy after it all happened Andy was victoria's ra and um she was like <laughs> she was like oh I had I did not know that this stuff was going down. <laughs> Yikes! It, like probably explained a lot. Also, like all the <laughs> on her floor. It's like, like why are all my kids crying all the time? <laughs> like they're all having mental breakdowns. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's why usually like you running through stuff. the stairwell, like hiding behind things. I'm confused. <laughs> um, the uh, okay, do we have a, a favorite quote of the season? I, I think we have to say, besides cool Victoria, would, uh, would have to. Uh, Austin just sits in his room sucking eggs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure, a good one. Um, I don't know. What do other people think? Definitely, Fluke's final confessional um really sticks out i mean i obviously just it's the last confessional i saw but so like maybe that's why it's present in my mind but it's just it's a it's a great quote about doing it for you know the student council presidents or whatever she says yes. it's great yeah. and i'm good always gonna say feluke's feluke she won the final survivor maryland challenge <laughs> peace love fiance <laughs> so i feel I like um I will fucking break you, actually. <laughs> Quite a we're bit. The, we're the CEOs of this alliance. He's, yeah. the, he's a worker child. Yeah. He's right. <laughs> uh, that is what she, and then also uh, during the final immunity when Faluke says the thing about like her gravestone where she's like, wait, who are you talking to? No one's at her funeral. <laughs> so good. Hilarious. Good stuff, yeah. Oh. Can't think um, of anything like that. Baby, make that ass clap is just like <laughs> making everything <laughs> out of it. Every I can't think of anything else. Um, the uh, be best moment of the season. 
Um, well, for me, it was uh, the final six, even though it hurt to lose Holly like that to me was just like amazing classic survivor, like insanity. Like I loved it. So good. I liked when Harry got voted out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we that didn't was put a Harry's... huge relief to me personally. <laughs> we didn't put Harry's final words as the quote of the season. Oh my God. Oh, that was so good. This means nothing to me. I'm going to go play professional Quidditch against Canada. <laughs> <laughs> There's no such thing as professional Quidditch. <laughs> <laughs> that was so good. Yeah, he had his priority straight. Um, Lita, I don't think we can replicate the fish out of water award. I don't know what. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what was that supposed to? Oh, who's going to go home next week? Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think there's an equivalent. Yeah. Um, player of the season, which I realize is stuff to do with one of them sitting on the in the interview right now. I mean, yeah, I'll like, immediately. <laughs> yeah. It's like the Brady Bunch. My thing. answer would be the same either way. <laughs> yes, my answer would have been the same. <laughs> Um, Victoria won uh, four Lita of the Pack awards, including this. So, Ooh. congratulations, Victoria. We'll be sending you the trophies in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> Eva, across the pond. Um, I guess the last thing I have is is uh, really mostly for for uh, Lita and Derek, but um, just overall thoughts on the season as we as we wrap up. Lita, your first survivor Maryland, both of your first survivor Maryland seasons. Great. Yeah. Um, it's it's a lot. Like it's more emotionally taxing to watch than the show is for sure because you're like these people are six years younger than me almost seven years younger than me at this point like it's really hard to like like I know I've been really harsh on this podcast and calling people ugly and stuff but it's mostly a joke like I mostly. These, these people are like <laughs> children like I don't know it's it's harder to like root against them in the same way that it is on the CBS show and by the same token I think everybody's like comes off a lot more flawed because they're not like fully formed adults yet um so people are a lot more complicated and that's a good thing but it's also um a more emotionally taxing thing to watch so um I think well, it's now take her retirement from watching Survivor Maryland <laughs> what no I'm I'm going to watch it but I think one of the reasons that I've had a hard time getting into it before is that it's just hard for me to binge um, just because of like the the different dynamics and like the the closer like relationship kind of that I have to these people that even if I don't know them, they know you and I know you. And, you know, it's like Survivor is so far removed from me. Um, whereas uh, like, even though I've like, I've hung out with Adam Klein for an equivalent amount that I've hung out with Victoria, but I still feel a lot more distant from Adam Klein because he is just like from such a, a different world um, that it's easier for me to like not be sad when he's voted out. Whereas like, I think it's too easy to like connect with these people emotionally that it's hard for me to binge and like, I feel bad when people get voted out. So um, I think it's like, I have to watch it once a week like i've been doing for or one, once every few days like i've been doing with this yeah well i in fairness i think this is this one also and i think that people who have seen the rest of them would agree that this is probably the most intense of those <laughs> yeah. Things, especially yeah. But, yeah. but it's really amazing and obviously like you don't need me to tell you that like what you've achieved is very very cool um and none of my feelings about survivor maryland are a reflection on your work it's a reflection on me like having a lot of feelings <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's good uh, yeah, so this was amazing. Like I had said, like I had never really, like I knew of Survivor Maryland, but I had never really like seriously been like, yeah, I'm going to sit down and watch this. Um, but like when I did, I don't know, this is, just gave me everything that the show in recent years has not been giving me, which is I actually am happy or I'm getting like an emotional attachment to like what's happening on the TV and it's making i don't know it's just an enjoyable experience in a way that the show is not like the cbs show has not been in a long time to me personally um so yeah just thank you so much for making this product and i don't know it's, it feels like you understand what makes survivors so enjoyable to watch and talk about 
maybe more than like Jeff Probst does at this point. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yeah, it's just, this was an amazing season of television and I'm so happy I watched it and I'm so happy that I'm now entirely addicted and very ready to watch as much as I can. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, yeah, I don't want to knock the, the I, I think there's a difference where this was a new concept and I was figuring it out as much as other people were. And that's, I think a lot of what made Survivor feel so authentic to people too, is that, the groundwork wasn't just all set and it's not just like, you know, I think a lot of what they have to do now is change things because they feel like they have to keep it fresh and new and mm -hmm. this was fresh and new. So I didn't have to do that. And there's a lot of flexibility I have in doing things that I, that they're not afforded. Um, but really ultimately it speaks to that. Like there are a lot of really at its core, there are a lot of amazing people that I was able to meet at Maryland. One of them being on here and like to see those people all go through that, that's, that's what made it. It just was really interesting people, dynamic people putting themselves through it and putting themselves through it a hundred percent, which is really all you can ask for. So um, this was a in very interesting season and a very, I think, I know I could get people mad at saying very unique, but I think it was a very unique season, <laughs> like more, it, it just, it is at least unique. Um, I um, would not want every season to be this kind of emotional and intense in this way, but um, the fact that someone like Victoria came through it and still eventually found this to be a big community for her and something that she still cared about, like that, it says enough to me that it was still worth it. I wanted um, to play again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I certainly did some persuading, but. <laughs> yeah. no, um, I, say, I think um, one big reason why we all took it so seriously is because Austin, the way that he put it on, even when it was just him, it was just so, so great. Like the quality was so high. We could tell it meant so much to him. So in turn, we wanted it. We wanted to like, play our best and, and be the best we could to, you know, so I like really appreciate Austin for bringing all of us in and have, letting us share in this experience. Yeah. I mean, it's like, I always say to people who are trying to host that if you put your all into it, then people are going to respond to it too. And nobody likes to, if people see someone putting their all into something, they're not no, like everyone appreciates that unless you just suck as a person. So unless you're Harry, I was going to say, unless you have more important things to do, which is I had. Right. Really, yeah. yeah. I am actually excited. I think, we're gonna do guts and glory next, right? It's up to you. I wasn't gonna refresh you either way. I, that I, was my vote too, because I'm very interested based on this preview alone. Yeah, so I, I've mentioned that, like, I think it would be hard for me to do this with all stars and with Terrapin Childs because of like some personal relationships that I have. Um, but uh, I'm excited to watch guts and glory. I'm also really excited to watch uh, Survivor Michigan. Yeah, Survivor Michigan is really good. I, I went for, if anybody doesn't know, I went to Michigan, um, it, but it started either after I graduated or like when it was too late for me to like, play. like I didn't hear about it until after I graduated. I would not have played. Um, it's not my, th I am not somebody who can like live with that kind of anxiety in my life, um, but I would have loved to uh, be on production. Did you know anyone who was in it? Uh, I don't think so. I didn't really know anybody younger than me at Michigan um, wow. unless it was people through like my dance team, but I don't think any of them would have played um, Survivor Michigan. And I think I would have heard about it if any of my friends had played. Yeah. <laughs> Survivor Michigan is really fun. They crushed it. So yeah, Great it's also a gigantic really school and I the what? didn't have a huge social circle. Yeah. <laughs> They had like a hundred applicants in their first season, which like wow. very different from me, like and like begging people to play when it started. So, <laughs> well, yeah. they had you driving up the like attention. Sure, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's still a lot. Michigan is, sure. is the bigger the school, the more you know pool of people you're going to have. So, um, yeah. Well, I'm excited for Guts and Glory. If, if we were doing Guts and Glory, which yeah, I was not going to press you into it, but it's a uh, it, I think it's a really fun season that it's a nice blend of having really cool characters and really cool relationships, but also being pretty, a little more lighthearted throughout um, and just like a fun blend of strategy and characters. And um, yeah, it's, it's like, it's also just like nice to watch. I definitely had learned some things about editing and production and iPhone cameras got a lot better. So um, you could, there's definitely a noticeable change in that area, which is personally pleasing. So do I know anybody on it besides Katie? Yeah, you know Evan, Shannon, Micah, um, Michelle. Oh, this is Micah season. Yeah. Yep. Oh, a person I'm actually friends with. Okay. okay. <laughs> oh God, it's over. Oh, any of these people. I think both the options are great. I understand the reservations of going to Outback currently, based off of current relationships. But 
Uh, both seasons are awesome, and I think you can't make a wrong decision. Yep. I would vote Death and Glory for what it's worth, so. And I think Lita's probably on board. Me too. And Derek's on board, so that's really all that counts. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. well, we've been going for two hours and eight minutes, and it's probably longer than people on here bargained for. So um, <laughs> I appreciate all of you coming out. I appreciate everybody who watched um, coming out to this. For those people, a few people have said that um, this is your first time watching through, so that's awesome and, and means a lot. And the, the comments and everything, um, especially as we're all sitting around for a lot of the time, it, uh, it, it very much is uh, nice and motivating. And um, I'm, you know, season seven and beyond are still in the works, um, and so it's it's motivating to keep doing that as well. Not not that that's my project, but I'm helping out a little bit, so I'm hoping to, to keep driving some more things to come out. But um, I'll chat with Lita. We'll figure out what our kind of plan is going forward. But uh, appreciate everybody who's tuned in and. Uh, Lita, thank you for, for bringing and suggesting this because it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, thank you, Austin. And thank you guys and Victoria for coming on. And thank you, everybody, for watching my usually mean thoughts. <laughs> Hi, Danny. Hi, Danny. Um, the, Hi. There's, Rob. <laughs> True. Does everyone want to give uh, their uh, – Lita, you can give your, your uh, social media information one more time. Yeah, um, Instagram, at Lita Graham, Twitter, at Lita Tweeted. <laughs> I just went private again. I'm constantly – going back and forth, but I've been um, in a really bad mood lately. And uh, it's just accentuated when randos like reply to my survivor tweets about how great Tony is and I don't want to hear it. So I went right back again. <laughs> but hey, but, the most recent survivor player or survivor player to get off of Twitter wasn't driven off by you. So you should feel better about that. <laughs> that's, that's true. Um, but yeah, uh, you, you can follow me there. I'll accept your request. Yeah. It's more just like when my shit gets retweeted, then people that I don't like start replying to it. So I don't like to be retweeted. <laughs> uh, Derek, would uh, you and as well? Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I'm trying to do a Wonder Twin powers thing with Sam. Uh, right <laughs> um, would you like to plug for me as well as the, the uh, your great podcast? Yeah, so Sam and I host uh, Bitter Jurors, a survivor, the only queer survivor super fan podcast that we know of. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, um, that was all Sam's idea. So um, I feel bad stealing his plug for him, but he has another podcast, so he can deal with it. But um, yeah, so we're on Bitter Jurors Pod on Twitter. Um, and I'm Rain Dierks on Twitter as well, um, like Rain Deer and then EKS at the end. Um, yeah, Animal Crossing content is slowing down, but you know they're constantly updating, so you might just get more screenshots. You never know. So. You'll find something new to hyperfixate on soon. Yeah. Yes, Do you feel sorely that old Animal Crossing is better than new Animal Crossing, and it's just not doing the same thing for you anymore. Wait, who me? Yeah. No, uh, I mean, I've only played the DS and 3DS ones, but New Horizons has been like a great surprise. I love it, you know, even though they didn't have a lot of the great things from New Leaf. Um, they're bringing them back in these updates, but, you know, I don't want to get too deep into Animal Crossing <laughs> talk. Uh, I'm at Sam Stanish. You can follow me. It's written out on my little square. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Very I, nicely done. Thanks. I do Vinegers with Eric, and I also do a podcast about straight culture called Word on the Straits with my best friend Joe, who is also gay, and we talk about a topic every week. Drops on Thursdays. Vinegers is out on Monday, tomorrow. It's a great app. Good podcast. Um, I am at Brian underscore Scally on Twitter, and do, if anyone watches the challenge, do a podcast with Matt Ligori over on the Dom and Colin network about the challenge every week. Nice. Um, cool. And uh, Victoria, you too. I know you're yeah, a big social media I user. Podcast, unfortunately, but you can follow <laughs> me on Instagram at Rhythm Vic. Um, also, did not help me with that name. <laughs> or I might like your tweet on Twitter, but I don't really tweet, so you don't need to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, will you be starting a podcast in the near future called Cool Victoria? <laughs> <laughs> Only if I can get cool guests like all of you on them. Oh, would listen and guest. Literally anytime. <laughs> yeah, I, I call Victoria podcast. Sure. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, cool. Well, thanks for coming on and joining us uh, and taking time out of your uh, studying schedule. I didn't know you were done in June, so that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's short. Yeah. yeah. Um, are you sad to be leaving? Um, I don't even know. Are you coming back? I, I honestly don't even know what's happening because like I was hoping to find a job here. Jobs are not happening. Obviously. <laughs> so. yeah. 
<laughs> we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Don't leave anytime soon. You're good for now. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Well, thanks everyone again. And uh, we'll see you back for whenever we do one of these again. So. Um, Yay. Bye. Bye. Bye.